I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Each week, I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day, the great outdoors. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock, and we are back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Summer is heating up, and whether you're headed to hike, surf, or just lay on the beach, I've got everything you need to enjoy the great outdoors. From lanterns that are gonna take your trip from camping to glamping, to a car adapter that will keep the kids entertained for the entire road trip. I cannot wait to get started. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Okay, so no one likes mosquito bites or smelly repellent spray. So this first pick is a game changer for those days outside in the summer. According to the brand, they are deep free mosquito repellent patches. They are peel and stick patches that are made with plant-based ingredients like citronella and peppermint essential oils, and they're waterproof. The brand said they repel mosquitoes for three feet for up to six to eight hours. So you can spend more time outside. The brand also says that they're pediatrician approved and safe enough for kids to use. All you have to do is peel one of these stickers and you can put it on your shirt or even your bag to stay protected all day long. I am so excited for summer road trips. And if you are gonna have a car full just like mine, this little car gadget is gonna come in handy when everyone's electronics need a charge on the go. The car power inverter has two AC 110 volt outlets and four USB port chargers. And it's so compact and lightweight, so you can charge all of the family's essentials like laptops, tablets, and cell phones. All right, and whether you are camping or hitting the beach, this next one is a two-in-one gadget you're gonna love. It is a lantern and a phone charger that actually folds down flat and then pops up when you need to use it as a lantern. It has a small solar panel so you can recharge it in a pinch when you're out in the sun. But when it's blown up, it's so lightweight that even the kids can use it. And according to the brand, it's 100% waterproof. And in the dark, this is what it looks like. Okay, this next one you guys have to see to believe. It is an inflatable couch air lounger that provides portable lounging wherever your outdoor adventure takes you. Did I mention you don't even need a pump to blow it up? You guys have to see this. It only takes a few minutes and all you have to do is take it out of this cool little carrying case that it comes with, unclip it, and then whisk it through the air to inflate it. The trick though is to trap air by closing the sleeve, opening little by little. So once it's blown up, according to the brand, it stays that way for up to five or six hours. Plus, it has a pillow-shaped headrest so you get support from head to toe. And yes, I've tried it and I actually think it's pretty comfortable. Another summer friendly must have is a pair of lightweight waterproof sneakers. From cruises to beach trips, these are a versatile sneaker that you're gonna wanna wear if you're outdoors near some water. These are great because the brand says that these have an anti-slip outsole with a strong track adhesion. So when you're wet, they're comfortable and you can wear these as walking shoes as well because according to the brand, they dry pretty quickly. Okay, so this umbrella is one of those finds I didn't know I needed until I found it. It is called the Sport Brella and it is a clamp-on shade canopy that provides shade wherever you need it. It has a unique heavy duty universal clamp that you can use on square and tube shaped surfaces. So what does that mean? You can clamp it on anything from a beach chair to a golf bag and even benches. It's also really unique because it has a 360 degree swivel, two button hinges, so you can get shade wherever you need it. And if that wasn't enough, this umbrella, according to the brand, it's made with a UPF 50 material that's gonna provide some serious sun protection. All right, and from fashion to backyard fun, I bet you've been wondering why there's a huge rainbow behind me. Well, this rainbow arc will make your home the place to be this summer. It's a large inflatable sprinkler that all the kids in the neighborhood are absolutely gonna love. 
and you don't need a huge yard to get in on the fun. It's about four and a half feet tall and five and a half feet wide, so it's perfect for the kids to have fun in the sun without the need to drive to the pool or the beach. Let's run through the products one more time. The Evolve Together Mosquito Repellent Patches, the Car Power Inverter, the Luminate Solar Lantern, the Wika Po Inflatable Lounger, the Quick Drying Water Shoes, the Sportbrella, and the H for Happy Gigantic Rainbow Sprinkler. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that is it for our editor's picks. Up next, Nicole in Lobu is talking to dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb, who is sharing her favorite skincare products to protect your skin in the great outdoors. Plus, she'll spice up your outdoor adventures with some makeup products to keep you looking fresh all day long. Don't go away. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Zovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. The warm weather is upon us and people everywhere are looking to soak up some sun. Now, if you want to update your beauty routine for the warm weather, boy, do I have products that are just right for you. Whether you're planning a day trip or a road trip, most of us are looking to protect our skin while also looking for that grand adventure. So I brought in expert dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb to share her favorite buzzworthy products for the great outdoors. Dr. Lamb, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so when it comes to being outdoors, what are some top essentials for staying safe in the sun? The main essentials for staying safe in the sun are sunscreen, 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 and sun avoidance. So you don't wanna be in the sun between the hours of usually 10 a.m 
to 2 p.m. They say if your shadow is actually shorter than you, mm -hmm. that means the sun is really too high. Oh. Yeah, also, also if you um, are out, you want to wear some protective clothing, you want to do broad brim hats, mm -hmm. you want to wear long sleeve clothing. Actually, a lot of clothing has SPF in it now. So those are really some of the mainstays to staying safe in the sun. That's good to know. I'm going to spread that to my entire family. I did not know that. Now, we all go to the dentist and we go see our family doctor, mm -hmm. but how often should we be going to see our dermatologist? Most people should check in with their dermatologist yearly. Um, sometimes it depends on your risk factor. So if you have lighter skin, if you spent more time in the sun, if you've had a lot of blistering sunburns, you might want to go every six to nine months. Oh. But most folks, especially over about the age of 30, need to check in yearly. Yearly, okay, good to know. I'm gonna add that to my calendar. All right, let's get into some of these picks. I'm so excited about everything you brought. So let's start with the first one. So this sunscreen, I'm fascinated. The fact that it's like an oily substance, Tell me about it. So what I love about this Melee sunscreen is that it's actually an oil base. It doesn't have mineral oil, but it's clear, it's sheer. You can put it on, you can put it on under makeup, um, and it really provides that great SPF. And as you apply it, you see how it has a sheen, yeah. but it creates good moisture without leaving any white cast. That's some of the biggest feedback I get from patients about yeah. sunscreen, is they don't like that white chalky feel. And this, look at how great that just blends into your skin. I mean. um, you get the moisture, you get that glow, um, without clogging your pores. That's what I love about it. It's so beautiful. I love this sheen. I'm obsessed with yeah. that already. Now, can everybody use this? I know it's maybe for black and brown people. Melee is a brand that actually was formulated for melanin-rich skin, but yeah. I like people to know that this is great for any skin type. All right, let's move on to the next product here. I love that this mineral sunscreen has no cast as well. What mm -hmm. other benefits does this mm -hmm. one have? So what's great about this Bliss Sunblock is that it is mineral-based. So the key with mineral-based, there's pretty much two different types of sunblock you can have. A chemical-based sunscreen or sunblock or a mineral-based one. This one is fully mineral-based, which is good for the coral reef, all of those types of things. Patients ask me about that a lot. They want to make sure that the sunblocks are good for the environment. Mm -hmm. But what's great about this one is the way they've processed it, like you said, no cast either. So if you try that one on, yeah. um, you're not going to have that white cast. It's good for all skin types. It also has an ingredient in it that actually absorbs oil and actually makes your pores look smaller. Yeah. Um, so that's like a two for one. That's a win-win yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Now there's a misconception. Can we talk about this elephant in the room that yeah. black and brown folks don't have to oh, wear no. sunscreen? <laughs> we have to wear sunscreen if we're having those grand adventures absolutely. outdoors, Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, even though skin that's darker does have some built-in SPF protection, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we don't need extra. So it's only about SPF 13 you get when you have darker skin. So this, for example, is SPF 30. You need that extra sunblock and that's what's gonna prevent us from looking old faster. So that's really the key. Dr. Lamb, thank you for clearing that up. And by the way, you may have earned a commission on a Bliss products on your site. Let's move on to this eyeshadow stick. I wanna look fresh when I'm out there in the great outdoors. Tell me about this one. All right, so what's nice about this, you put it on um, and in a little bit of time it sets and you can get in the water and you can be out there. Nobody wants to be in the sun or exercising or sweating and having their makeup running all over their face. So this one is great. It really has staying power. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, people want to look glam when they're on the beach, out in the sun. And so this is really formulated exactly for those purposes. But look at the color payoff know, as well. I know, they have a broad range of colors. Yeah. So you don't have to sacrifice sacrifice beauty for convenience and safety, so that's important. <laughs> I love how small and portable it is. Yeah. All right, let's move on to other makeup products as mm -hmm. well. When it comes to applying makeup for the great outdoors, right, it's sometimes you wonder, is it light and breathable? Is this one light and breathable? So this MAC foundation is light and breathable. I mean, a lot of people know MAC for their staying power, their ability to hold up under lights, camera action, yeah. um, but this one also holds up in the water, which is really fantastic. Um, and it is breathable, is light, and again, also you're not going to find it all over your shirt mm -hmm. um, because it sets as well. Look at how it is just melting into my skin. Absolutely love this one. So Dr. Lamb, I have a confession. Mm -hmm. I've actually never used self-tanner before. <laughs> how does this work? All right, so the way self-tanner works is you apply it. There's a chemical compound in there, and if you apply it day after day, particularly this one, which gives you that gradual glow, so after about five to seven days, you're going to get some increased pigment, um, a nice glow. As a dermatologist, we always say the 
only safe tan is from a bottle, okay? <laughs> okay? So that's the only kind of tan I ever want anybody of any skin type to get. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, this is gradual, so you're not gonna have those streaks that you sometimes can get with some sunless tanners, and it'll just give you that nice, ready to be out in the sun, but again, safely tan. I love this, and I love how also that anyone can use this, mm -hmm. right, because I just put it on my hands, and I love how it just blends right in seamlessly, too. Mm -hmm. That's the key for so many of these products. We don't want to have you do a lot of work. We want it to be a seamless and have you able to enjoy the sun in the summer. I can't wait for that. All right, so sunburn is one of just the most <laughs> annoying things ever, right, that you can experience. How does this product here from Clarence help to soothe the skin? Yes, so first, I mean, for me, a dermatologist, that's like sacrilege. I never want to have somebody come in and say that they got a burn. But if you did, ideally you will have used some of these first two products to avoid that. But if you do, um, you want something that's gonna be soothing, cooling. This product has a lot of aloe in it. So aloe has a very high water content, um, which is gonna be soothing for you. And one little trick I say is to put that in the refrigerator before you apply it. So when it's actually physically cool, that helps as well. Okay, so do you use this before you get the sunburn or you use it after? No, technically you're supposed to use it after. It's okay. actually called after sun. But again, hopefully you've done the right things. You've applied your sunblock. You want to always apply it about 20 minutes before you go outside. You've mm -hmm. worn your hat. You've avoided the sun. It smells great as well. Mm -hmm. Liam, I love all your selections. I am ready to get out there and just be out there on my great adventure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Oh yeah, our pleasure. Now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the Melee No Shade Sunscreen Oil, the Bliss Black Star Sunscreen, the Cargo Cosmetics Swimmables Cream Eyeshadow Stick, the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Radiant Sheer Foundation, the Jergens Natural Glow Self Tan and Moisturizer, and the Clarence SOS Sunburn Soother Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, you'll never believe what's in style this summer. Chassie Post is here with the hottest trends for the great outdoors, like the chic fanny pack that's making a comeback. Don't go away. Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and today 
We've been talking about hitting the roads or trails and taking in the great outdoors. And I can't wait to show you the trends that will have you looking your best while enjoying some fun in the sun. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. So let's start off with the cutest matching jacket and short set from Old Navy that is the definition of sporty chic. I love it when brands take functional high-tech performance wear and make it fashion. So let's first talk about the jacket. It's an easy, lightweight, half-zip pullover with a drawstring hood. And check out the color blocking. Such a big trend. I am obsessed with these fun, punchy oranges. So cute. And if you're more of a monochromatic gal, it also comes in a solid black. But also, I am a huge fan of this silhouette. It is so easy to wear. I mean, slightly oversized with that on-trend crop that hits right at the waist, which I think makes it look really flattering. And it even has a drawstring hem. And this fabric, it's fabulous. It's called Stretch Tech. And just like the name suggests, it's got a great stretch to it. And the brand says that it's also breathable with quick drying powers and UV sun protection built right in. But that's just the jacket. Let's complete the set with the shorts. I mean, they're made out of the same stretch tech fabric, but they have an additional feature. Old Navy says that they're also water repellent. And the cut of these shorts is so flattering. They're high-waisted, and they've got a really nice, generous, wide leg opening. And both of those features combined make your legs look really great and elongated. These shorts also have room for all your stuff, loads of pocket, and there's even one hidden stash zip pocket that can hold your phone. But if you're not a matching set fan, no worries. These two pieces also work great as separates to mix and match with the rest of your closet and come in tons of summer colors in sizes ranging from extra small to 4X. So we're gonna look great out there this summer. <laughs> Workout or weekend, we've got you covered with this sporty set. Next, one of my absolute favorite sporty must-haves and one of the summer's biggest trends, the exercise dress. And just like the yoga pant, you don't actually have to be exercising to wear it. So whether you're running around town doing errands, heading to the gym, or hitting the tennis court or golf course, the exercise dress is going to keep you looking and feeling cool. Now, I've actually got three of these very same dresses and they make a really great warm weather uniform. And I'm not alone. We've seen it all over social media. And once you try one, you'll see what everybody's so excited about. I mean, first of all, it's got the best of two worlds. You've got this easy A-line dress, which is inspired by tennis core slash all things tennis style, which is a huge trend right now, combined with the practicality and relative modesty of a skirt. See right under the skirt? You've got biking shorts with two pockets. It's almost like shapewear. And this one's from Amazon and is a really great example of the trend. So next, we've got two versatile pairs of performance pants that you are going to love for all of your outdoor activities this summer. So first up, meet the Climatrail zip-off pant. Now this pan is by Eddie Bauer and it's genius and perfect for those days where it starts out cool and gets warmer as the day goes on. And here's how they work. They start out as a full length pant and then as the temps rise, you can just zip off the bottoms and you got a pair of shorts. And how cool is that? And check out this fabric. The brand says it's made out of a four way stretch that's also water repellent and has UPF 50 plus sun protection. And did we mention that they were also flattering? We give a thumbs up to the mid-rise silhouette. We've also got another equally versatile outdoor pant from Amazon that is a number one bestseller. These easy to wear joggers are also made out of a performance fabric that the brand says is lightweight, quick dry, and water resistant and shoppers rave about how comfortable these pants are. According to the brand, the fabric has 8% spandex and it's got an easy elastic waistband with a little drawstring so you can adjust the fit. And check out all these pockets. 
You've got two side zip, two cargo, and one back zip pocket. So no wonder they're so popular. And yes, these pants are perfect for outdoor adventures, hiking, working out, walking, you name it. But they also make excellent travel and lounge pants. Now, if you've been looking for an easy and stylish way to protect yourself from the sun-strong UV rays this summer, then you're going to love these multitasking swim tees from Land's End. They're designed to just wear over your swimsuit top. And according to Land's End, they're made out of a moisture-wicking stretch fabric that keeps you dry, uncomfortable on land. The brand says, besides providing more coverage from the sun than a typical bathing suit, that they also offer UPF 50 protection, which really comes in handy if you spend a lot of time at the pool or the beach. Plus, I am loving their surfer chic vibe. I mean, look at these stripes here. That's where rash guards actually got their start, protecting surfers from rough boards. And now they've gone mainstream, protecting us all from the sun. And I'm really into the classic crew neck style. And you can choose from either short sleeves or long sleeves. And they come in so many vibrant colors and patterns. And the best part, they're not just for swimming. They also work as a colorful cover-up. Moving on to New England chic, meet the Marley Lily monogrammed Nantucket cover-up. And she is cute. We all need a great cover-up and we could not be more obsessed with this one. Yes, we love the loose fitting, flattering V-neck silhouette the easy butterfly sleeves, and the classic seersucker print fabric. But let's be honest, this cover-up had us at the word monogram. See right here on the hem? You can choose from several monogram styles and three pretty colorways. The blue seersucker, we've got the pink seersucker, and we've also got a mint seersucker. Plus, talk about beach to brunch and beyond. You can throw on this fabulous cover-up over your suit, add a pair of gold hoop sandals, and you are ready for dinner. Just like that. And if you really want to do it up, they even make a matching monogram straw hat in my favorite surfer style. Talk about fun in the sun. Next, don't get me started on my love of fanny packs slash belt bags, or in this case, the bum bag, because I really, really love them. And there's a reason that this 90s style is back in such a big way. They're just so incredibly useful. Now, this is the Moonbeam bum bag, and I am a huge fan of anything that allows me to go hands-free. And I have to tell you guys, I wear my fanny pack every single day. And in my humble opinion, this sporty style is the ultimate in hands-free, utilitarian style. Now we found these adorable takes at Madewell. They're designed by a Los Angeles-based brand called Lola, known for their stylish carryalls inspired by California beach life. Now they've got a classic half moon shape, thus the name, and you can wear them around your waist, a la the classic bum bag, or you can wear them over your shoulder as a crossbody. And it's the perfect size for your on-the-go essentials. This new collection is designed from recycled nylon with cool details like a chunky zipper, and I love the bold candy colors. And of course, one of this bag's finest virtues is its versatility. With that hands-free storage, this is the bag you want coming along for the ride, whether you're headed on an outdoor adventure, to a fun barbecue, or to the grocery store. And last but not least, Put your hands together for one of my favorite summer innovations, the ponytail hat. This hat just might be my favorite summer accessory ever. It's genius and hysterical, and I've seen the ponytail baseball hat before, but never the ponytail sun hat. Thank goodness someone came along and designed a hat that doesn't make me choose between my beloved high pony and sun protection. And let's face it, getting your hair off your neck feels a whole lot cooler when it's scorching hot out there. This hat also has a lot of bells and whistles. It's got a good wide brim, three and a half inches, breathable mesh sides, and both the hat and the chin strap are adjustable. Plus, the brand says that it's waterproof, quick drying, and even has a built-in sweatband. 
It's also packable, so you can fold it up and throw it in your bag and go. Plus, it comes in over 16 different colors. Yes, this is a hat that both you and your ponytail are gonna love. Okay, so let's run through these products one more time. We've got the Old Navy Color Block Jacket and Shorts, the Amazon Sleeveless Workout Dress, the Eddie Bauer Zip Off Pants, the Libin Cargo Joggers, We've got the Land's Inn Rash Guards, the Marley Lily Monogrammed Hat and Cover-Up, the Madewell Lola Bum Bag, and the Ponytail Sun Hat. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites, so tune in for an all-new episode of Shop All Day. Oh, today all day, summer's officially here, so get outside, do something fun. Up next, Sama Dada is sharing the ultimate menu for a perfect picnic party in the park. This is sort of like playing with Play-Doh, but it tastes good and it's edible. Play-Doh is not edible, I don't think. Play-Doh is edible? Yeah. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's no way. I just learned that Play-Doh is edible. Don't eat it though, that's disgusting. Just eat these instead. In the summer months especially, it's really nice to get outside and take advantage of your local parks. And listen, I am your dream picnic guest because I never come without the most important thing, food. So I'm gonna show you how to make two of my favorite recipes for your next hashtag picnic party, my easy homemade turmeric hummus and my favorite spiced chickpea burgers with a delicious red pepper sauce. Some may say it's sacrilegious to make hummus with canned chickpeas, but you know what? Convenience is a gorgeous thing, and you can still get a really delicious result with the canned chickpeas that have been sort of hibernating at the back of your pantry for quite some time. If you're freaked out at all by making hummus at home, just don't be, because you know what? All you need to make it is a blender. So let's start. Starting with my canned chickpeas, adding these straight to the blender. They're so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and add my tahini. You cannot have hummus without tahini. It is like peanut butter and jelly, you know what I mean? So don't forget it. You just simply can't have hummus without it. It makes it nice and earthy and creamy and flavorful. Okay. You've got those really savory flavors from that tahini, from the chickpeas, so now we need a little bit of tartness and that's where our lemon juice comes in. Just gonna roll the lemon to release some of that juice. Lemon juice going straight in my blender. It's gonna make this hummus really bright and zingy. I will warn you, once you learn how to make this hummus at home, you may never go back to store-bought. I'm sorry, but I'm just not sorry. Perfect. Lemon is done. Now I'm gonna add in my garlic. I like using raw garlic here because it has a really punchy, flavorful taste and we want all of that flavor in this hummus. Here's where we really spice it up, okay? We're gonna add my three favorite spices. I'm adding some cumin. Adding some paprika for a little hint of smoke and spice. And what would this turmeric hummus be without turmeric? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm adding my turmeric in. Another reason I wanted to make a turmeric hummus is because of that gorgeous yellow color. So that's really gonna give that hummus that bright pop. It's gonna look really good on your table, I promise. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. and some freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm just gonna blend. In order to get this hummus super smooth, we're gonna add a little bit of water, tablespoon by tablespoon, until it reaches our desired consistency. For me, that's very smooth and velvety and luxurious.
starting with just a bit. The trick with this hummus to get it super velvety smooth is when you reach your desired consistency, blend it for an extra three or four more times. That's gonna make it even more smooth. Like, look at that. I really cannot wait. Let me just adjust to taste. See if it needs anything. I mean, come on, it's perfect. I'm gonna add the hummus into my bowl. Have you ever seen anything this smooth in your life? No, right? Okay. Now, let me show you how to adorn this hummus. I'm gonna smooth it out. I created a little swoosh so that the olive oil and spices have a little home. Drizzle some olive oil on top. Sprinkling with a little bit of za'atar. If you don't know what za'atar is, it's a Middle Eastern spice blend with sumac, sesame seeds, and another host of spices. It's so good. If you don't have za'atar, don't worry. You can totally omit it, but I think it tastes amazing with it. I'm gonna add a touch of paprika just for a little color. This works as a nice contrast to that bright yellow that the turmeric gives this hummus. I mean, look at how pretty that is, right? But we're not done yet. I have this gorgeous platter of fresh vegetables here and I'm just gonna cut them and adorn them around my hummus. If you don't feel like slicing your veggies yourself, no worries, you can buy it pre-cut. I've got some time on my hands. I mean, this is art. Monet, is that you? It's me. I think I made a masterpiece. I'm not trying to be conceited, but like, are we all looking at the same thing here? Doesn't this make you wanna be one of my picnic guests? Maybe? So pretty. Need to take a picture. My phone really does eat first. I know that's cliche, but it's kind of true. I'm, oh my God, I was immediately taken aback by how pretty this looked. <laughs> ah, I cracked myself up. I'm taking like 20,000 pictures. I think 12 would have been fine, but... <laughs> okay. I think I got the shot. Can confidently say I got the shot. I'm gearing up. Okay. This is the most both exciting and tragic part of making hummus, is that part where you ruin the art. But it's okay. This is what it's for. Okay, I'm going in. Did that make you all feel things? Because I just felt really emotional. <laughs> okay, ready to taste. Mmm. It's so good. Something so flavorful paired with a simple, crisp vegetable, just like... These vegetables just gotta glow up. Thanks to this hummus. It's art. It's art. No picnic would be complete without a sandwich, so I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite chickpea burger with a red pepper sauce. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients.
To turn your favorite hummus into my red pepper special sauce, first cut two peppers in half and de-seed them. Then roast the red peppers at 450 degrees for about 25 minutes. After removing the peppers from the oven, they'll need to be steamed for 10 to 15 minutes. You can do this by inverting a glass bowl over the peppers onto a cutting board. Sealing the peppers creates steam, making it easier for the skins to peel right off. Remove the pepper peels and discard. Yep, they're a little slippery. Roughly chop the red peppers into large pieces. Add two cups of your favorite hummus to a high-speed blender. Homemade or store-bought will do just fine. Now, drop in your roasted red peppers. Blend the mixture until it's well combined and super smooth. Now, the special sauce is ready to be spread on anything your heart desires. Having a good veggie burger recipe in your back pocket is sort of like having your best friend on speed dial. It's pretty useful. And I don't know if people are really using speed dial anymore, but you get the point. My chickpea burgers are deliciously spiced, they're super hearty, and they're perfect for when you want something substantial that still happens to be plant-based. First things first, I want this burger to have a lot of complex layers of flavor, so I'm gonna saute some onion and garlic to put in it. Just gonna dice my red onion. I'm only using half here. I'm using a red onion here because I really like that it adds that nice sweetness. It's gonna be so good in this veggie burger. Also aesthetically speaking, I know it's what's on the inside that counts, but aesthetically speaking, these red onions are really pretty. <laughs> that purpley red. We love it. Red onions are diced. I'm now gonna mince my garlic. Great way to mince garlic, all you're gonna do is take your clove, use the flat edge of your knife, get some of your aggression out, and then start mincing. I'm gonna do this with all of the rest of my cloves. Garlic? It's our friend, okay? You may smell like garlic for three days after cooking with it, but it's worth it. It's worth the price you have to pay. We wanna extract all of that garlicky flavor, it's so good. 
And we're mincing it really finely so that we can get out all of that flavor, all of that aroma, all of that garlic perfume that will plague you for the next three days. <laughs> all right. Now I'm gonna heat my pan and add some olive oil. My oil is shimmering and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Got some resistant ones in here. Don't worry, you're gonna become a burger. Something to celebrate. All right. We want these onions to be tender, translucent, starting to brown around the edges. When we get a little bit of that caramelization, it's gonna impart so much flavor onto these burgers. And you might be wondering, why didn't we add the garlic with the onions? But we can't do that because the garlic takes a lot less time to cook. So if we added with the onions, it would burn and that's not cute. My onions look perfect. They're nice and golden brown around the edges. They're tender, translucent, which means it's time for the garlic. Okay. Doesn't need too much time to become a little brown, about two minutes. Don't forget, and I'm reminding you here, to season with salt and pepper. Flavor is our friend. We always want more of it. Okay, this looks amazing. The garlic is nice and golden, it's got some color. I'm gonna set this aside to cool and then get to work on the base of my burger. For the base of this burger, I'm starting with some cashews. I know that sounds crazy, but cashews are buttery and delicious. They really allow this veggie burger to be hearty and meaty without any actual meat. So I'm gonna add that into my food processor. I'm using raw cashews here, unsalted, completely raw. This is important. All I'm gonna do is process these cashews into a nice fine powder, kind of like a flour. Looks pretty good. All right, this looks perfect. Let me just show you the texture real quick. It's sort of like this nice flour, you can see. It's gonna be a really hearty base for this burger. Okay, cashews are done. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of my ingredients. Now I'm gonna add some flaxseed meal. This is gonna be really great as a binder for these burgers. It's sort of like a vegan replacement for an egg. Okay, looking cozy in there. And because I can't live my life without any spice, it just simply is not possible. I'm gonna add my spices. Starting with a little paprika. And just know, these spices aren't gonna make it spicy, right? It's gonna be flavorful, it's gonna add a lot of body and taste. That's what we like. A little bit of turmeric. Yum. Some cumin. And finally, some coriander. This is a chickpea burger, so we gotta add our chickpeas. These are just drained. <laughs> and now we're gonna process. It's okay if this mixture isn't fully pulverized. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of that chickpea texture. So don't sweat it. If you've got a little chickpea hanging out in there. Now I'm just gonna add some olive oil and then remember my onions and garlic from earlier? These are going in there as well. A little olive oil. And then my onions and garlic. Perfect. Okay, you probably guessed this, but 
We're gonna process one more time. My mixture is looking amazing. Gonna transfer it to a bowl. Just transferred my patty mixture into my bowl and you'll notice it's kind of thick and sticky which is great because then we'll be able to form it into patties really nicely. Because I want this to have a little bit of zest, a little bit of something herby, I'm just gonna add some cilantro in here. You can totally use parsley if cilantro freaks you out, I won't judge you. I'm just gonna roughly tear them. I like those big pieces of herbs, but if you want it smaller, you can totally chop it. Okay. Mix that in. And now we're ready to form them into patties. A couple things I wanna do before I form these into patties. First, remove all my rings. <laughs> so I wear like 12,000. And now I'm gonna oil my hands just to make sure that nothing sticks to them. Just a little on here, just a little. Using extra virgin olive oil. I think you're moisturizing your hands, but you're really just prepping to make your burgers. Okay, here we go. It's very fun, very therapeutic, and look how well this sticks together. So I'm gonna form these into like a little ball at first and then I'll flatten them out into patties. You can really make these as big or as small as you'd like. I'm going for like a major burger situation, but you can also make little small burgers as well if you want little bite-sized snacks, if you wanna throw them on a salad. They're very versatile. See how virtually nothing is sticking to my hands? You can thank the extra virgin olive oil for that. You've got a lot of really hearty elements in this burger, the cashews, the chickpeas. It allows it to stick together, but also allows you to feel really satiated. It's really delicious and just a really great way to eat a veggie burger. That's exciting. I'm gonna put these in the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Make sure you flip them once halfway through baking. And if you don't wanna eat them now, don't worry. You can freeze them for another day. They're perfect for meal prep. I mean, is this a joke? Look at this, that crisp golden exterior. It looks so beautiful. If you did want it to be a little more crisp on the outside, feel free to sear them. But to me, this looks perfect. It's time to assemble my burger. I'm very excited. I've got my bun, got my tomatoes, my lettuce, and I have a little red pepper special sauce to go in the burger as well. So I'm gonna go for it. Got my bun. I like a lot of sauce, so I'm gonna go ahead and be generous here. 
is gonna add more flavor, little bite, and some nice color too. I'm gonna spread both sides of the burger, both buns, here as well. The red pepper sauce is like tangy, a little sweet. These are roasted red peppers. Okay. Now for my star. Go ahead and add one of my burgers. Straight onto my bun. It's like it was meant to be there. It's almost upsetting how perfect it looks on that burger bun. Okay. Gonna add a little fresh tomato. Some lettuce for some greens in my life. Okay, time for that other bun. I mean, come on, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Look at the colors. I gotta take a picture. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay. Oh my God, look at that. All of those layers of flavor. That looks really good. <laughs> okay, is it time? I'm nervous, I'm not gonna eat this in a cute way at all, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna go from this side. This seems more approachable to me. Okay, here we go. Mmm. I mean, this chickpea burger is so well spiced, so well seasoned. I think I need another bite. It seems like I must take another bite. Okay. Mmm. It's just simply not right. It's simply not right how good it is. That red pepper special sauce though, ties everything together. See, this is why I'm everyone's favorite picnic guest. I do stuff like this, and then they always invite me again. <laughs> you can be that person too. This is, I'm speechless, I'm speechless, I'm speechless. Okay, I'm, I'm going in. You, someone has to stop me, someone has to stop me. I'm gonna keep eating this. No one's gonna stop me? Okay. All right. Going to Central Park is one of my favorite things to do in New York. It's the perfect place for a picnic party. I invited my sister and my best friend for a little afternoon lunch. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> oh my God. What's up? Come on, come on, come on. Hey okay, guys, look at my crudite pasta. Yeah, I'm eyeballing it. I cannot live my life without hummus, and I love bringing it to a picnic because it's easy to pack and snack on. We love a fresh veg. Mm -hmm. And a yeah, hummus is so dish. good, do you think? Hummus is so good. <laughs> <laughs> my chickpea burger is one of my favorite plant-based meals. It's hearty and comforting, plus it's great hot or room temp. Oh, oh I like that you're taking photos. That makes me happy. Are you cheers. Okay, cheers. 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 <laughs> it's like Shake Shack, honestly. It looks like Shake Shack in this place. Okay. Doesn't it? This uh -huh. looks fake. It's like a crabby patty. <laughs> mm. There's nothing I love more than sharing my food with the people that I love, and a picnic is a great place to do it. Let's do it. Okay. Good morning, welcome to The Boost, and we are gonna start your day off with some good stuff, some positivity, and we're celebrating the next generation of leaders and trailblazers. So let's start. Meet art historian Katie Hessel. She's celebrating the great women artists throughout history in more ways than one. Take a look. What's the first thing you think of when you come into a museum? I think excitement. 
because I'm gonna learn something that I've never learned before. And see and stuff I, like this. I know, it's overwhelming, it's, it's exhilarating. Londoner Katie Hessel has always really loved art. Also that for me like, looks like a winter or like early spring mm -hmm. and that's like deep summer. summer. It's a passion she honed at a young age, visiting museums and galleries with her older sister. And I remember her teaching me how to sketch and really look at art. As a kid, I used to create all these art diaries and like <laughs> write little reviews about... What is an art diary? <laughs> like writing reviews of shows or like, you know, trying to get as involved as much as I can in it, trying to understand what it is that I'm looking at. Oh my goodness, and your diary is reviews of art shows, <laughs> not like, today I kissed a boy. <laughs> That's amazing. I know, I know. That passion led Katie to study art history in college and take her first jobs working in galleries. In 2015, a major realization forced her to look at her profession in a different way. I walked into an art fair, age 21, looked around me, realized that a single artwork on the walls around me was by a woman. And then I had to ask myself a series of questions. Could I even name any woman artist off the top of my head? She couldn't, so Katie dug deeper, learning a centuries-old pattern of women being left out of the art world and subsequently from history. By the numbers from 2008 to 2020, work by female artists made up just 11% of art in major museums in the U.S., not to mention the disparity in sales. The highest price that's ever gone for a woman at auction is Georgia O'Keeffe, $44.4 million. That is less than a tenth of the Salvador Mundi by Leonardo, $450 million. This newfound knowledge prompted Katie to create the Great Women Artists Instagram page that same year. She shares new artists daily to a younger audience, and she goes more in-depth in her podcast of the same name. Marina Abamovic, how are you doing today? Oh my God, after this introduction, <laughs> And then comes this. Yes! This is a textbook. Did you set out when you started this to do that? To create a new text that would really teach on art? I grew up reading a very famous book called The Story of Art by E. H. Gombrich. And it's kind of like the introductory Bible to art history. And so I decided because he left out women that I'd leave out men. Katie's book is a play on this formative text, calling it The Story of Art Without Men. I was so fed up of women being written about as the wife of, the muse of, the daughter of, the sister of. Why do we always have to say Lee Krasner is Jackson Pollock's wife? Spanning from the 1500s to present day, she makes known the masters of the craft. Clara Peters, Tracy Emin, Marina Abramovic, Artemis Gentileschi, Ruth Asawa, Alice Neal. And Georgia O'Keeffe. We took in the prominent artist's new solo exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. I begin the chapter with this great quote from her. A great quote. She it says, is. men put me down as the best woman painter, but I think I am the best painter. How do you think we got this far without having women be part of the conversation? I think it's about who has controlled the narrative. And what I think is amazing now is that more people from more backgrounds than ever have positions of power and they are using them so well. Everything is changing. Just as her sister fueled her love for art, Katie hopes her book lights a spark in someone else. What is your hope in terms of where this goes? Do you want this in classrooms? I want it in classrooms. I want it in people's homes. If we aren't representing everyone in art, then we're just not seeing society as a whole. Coming up next, we are going to pay a visit to Sesame Street, introducing you to the talented puppeteer making Muppet history. Al Roker has that story. As the song goes, can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? We found out from their newest puppeteer, Megan Pyphus Peace, who's been blazing trails just like the show always has. Well, we're here sitting on the stoop at 123 Sesame Street. What are your early memories of, of this program? All of the characters here were my friends. I watched them every day. I had a personal connection with the street. When I was three years old, I had a Sesame Street birthday party. We had a Sesame Street cake and an Elmo walk around character came out and Big Bird. Those friends would help her find her passion. When I was 10 years old, I had just changed to a new elementary school and had to make new friends. I was super shy. I went to a puppetry conference with a few members from my church. I was exposed to women ventriloquists, and I saw myself being able to open up just like them and uh, make something come alive in that moment. So I went home, I told my parents I wanted to become a ventriloquist. Megan's mom, 
checking out VHS tapes from the library for her daughter, and Megan watched them over and over, starting to mimic them. I took my puppet to school and was cracking jokes during lunch break, and my teachers noticed and asked if I would perform in front of the whole school. Mm -hmm. That was my very first performance, and what made me knew in that moment that that's what I wanted to do forever, to hold the attention of kids anywhere from three years old to 12 and make them laugh and smile, that became my joy. That joy continuing as she performed, seeing an opportunity to express herself. You don't go very far. Becoming known as the valedictorian ventriloquist. We all will go far if we are willing. And go far she did, even taking her act on America's Got Talent. A stolen moments oh, wow. is all that we should. After graduating from Vanderbilt with degrees in economics and finance, she spent seven years in commercial real estate until... I found the Instagram page of the performer who does Abby Kadabi, Leslie Carrera Rudolph, and I just fangirled. I said, oh my God, I love your character and what you do with her. She DM'd me and said, you are a gift. What was it like when you first heard from Megan? There was something super warm and heartfelt about it. And so I, I went and I, I, I Googled her and I was blown away. I just felt like it was magic. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds really corny, but I do feel like it was a meeting of the hearts. Leslie was so impressed with Megan's talents, she became her mentor, sharing her material with Sesame's producer who invited Megan to audition. Last September, making history as the street's first full-time black female puppeteer. I immediately entered my the imagination of my childhood. I still wish I could figure out what kind of job I want to do when I grow up and entering the imagination of a lot of kids with six and three quarter year old Gabrielle. What is it like being here on Sesame Street? Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, the weather is always great. It's always sunny. Mm -hmm. You know, you should really consider being a meteorologist here. Megan, hoping her path to the pinnacle of puppetry inspires others. My goal is just to inspire girls to achieve whatever dream they have, mm -hmm. no matter their background, their zip code, or no matter the color of their skin. Sesame's executive producer believes representation is important. We want people to be able to see characters on screen and feel like they see themselves. Those friends that inspired her as a child are her best friends today. Who are some of your friends? Tell me about oh, them. Well, I got lots of friends. Mm -hmm. I got um, Prairie Dawn, uh -huh. Abby, mm -hmm. Elmo, mm -hmm. Cookie Monster, mm -hmm. Gonger, mm -hmm. Grover, yeah. uh, Big Bird. Yeah. So nice to meet you, Gabrielle. Oh, it's so nice to meet you, too, Mr. Al. High five. Yeah! Woo! Woo! This boom. Boom! Boom! Coming up, a young Hollywood insider giving millions of viewers the scoop on what life is really like on set. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. A young TikTok star is using the platform to offer a rare glimpse into life on a set. He's worked on some of the biggest movies and shows and his really fun behind the scenes videos have earned him a huge following. Chanel Jones has more. When I tell people that a lot of my job is TikTok, I have to really take myself seriously because if I just show up with no plan, they're like, oh, okay, the, the TikTok kid doesn't know what he's doing. Hey, it's Reese again. Reese Feldman's job title didn't exist when he was born 24 years ago. How did you get started? And so I graduated in May 2020 at like the very height of the pandemic and I didn't have a job. I applied to the Today Show, <laughs> didn't get it. If you guys take my resume after, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be great. Don't worry, Reese is doing just fine. After graduating with a film degree from Tulane, he landed a job on a reality show set. But he was having a hard time explaining to his friends what it was he did every day. So he took to TikTok. I decided to make videos, just like showing the process of working on a TV show. And slowly that began to gain traction. I went from that show to Real Housewives of New Jersey, where I was for a few months, and then to The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It was while he was working as a production assistant for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel that Reese's TikTok account, Guy with the Movie Camera, started to take off. Today, I got to spend the day with Tony Shalhoub. He brought followers along on his day to day, all the while garnering new Maisel fans. They would comment and be like, oh, you know, this was my parents' favorite show, but after I saw your video, I decided to watch it, and now I love it. And industry executives started to take notice. I got tapped by more studios, by award shows, by different productions to work on their sets, make behind the scenes videos. These jobs brought him to a familiar place, Studio 1A. I was here for Not OK doing behind the scenes stuff. The movie also has its own TikTok account. Of course it would, like, I'm trying to keep up. We're making a TikTok <laughs> right now. And of course, he made a video about it. No, you're Wait, not. are you kidding yeah. me? It is the inception of the Today Show. So what does Reese do? It's getting all these really great beats, like the old DVD special features just shot from me, my point of view on an iPhone. I'm thinking in two lenses and one lens of what I want to be put out in real time, what's trending, what's relevant, what will get people excited in the moment, and then stuff down the line that I think people might want to see as the movie or the show gets closer to release. Hi, I'm Reese, and this is me complimenting people on the Oscars red carpet. Other productions have also experimented with this kind of media marketing strategy. This year, Reese was part of a group of social media stars who partnered with the Academy to promote the Oscars ceremony. By the time this airs, yes. you will have already worked uh, the Emmys red carpet. Yes. I know you did the Oscars back in March. I did, which was insane to me because like the Oscars was my Super Bowl growing up. But yeah, no, the Emmys is insane. And this month, Reese hosted TikTok's first ever Emmys live stream, reuniting with Mrs. Maisel herself and scoring backstage interviews with the likes of Lizzo, John Oliver, and Cheryl Lee Ralph. The question always comes up like, are you gonna have them do a dance? I'm like, TikTok itself doesn't have to be a dancing app. It is literally, it's just, it's a short form and now kind of long form video app. So it could be anything you want it to be. Coming up next, we are spotlighting an incredible musician you may not know yet. This piano prodigy is shaking up the classical music scene, using his talents to help draw in all types of listeners. Here's Al once again. You can tell a story with no words. I think that's what really interests me about classical music is the journey that it takes you on. Black Bach, born Charles Wilson III in Detroit, started playing the piano at just four years old. After years of study, not to mention a family of musicians behind him, he was soon playing in local jazz clubs and lounges. My first piano uh, cost my parents a hundred bucks and my dad got some black paint and he painted it all up and we got it tuned. It was enough for me to, you know, learn and uh, become professional. I understand your mom had a certain way of helping you keep rhythm. Yeah. She would chop vegetables. <laughs> really? <laughs> be, yeah. When I would practice, she would bring whatever she was cooking into mm -hmm. the piano room and she would sit there and she... All that practice paid off. Along the way, Bach fell in love with classical music and that fuels his drive to change any preconceived notions about who should have a relationship to him. How did you come up with the name Black Bach? I went into my cultural roots, which mm -hmm. are in hip hop. And I decided, well, why not a rap name? 
Even though you're doing classical Even music. Even though I'm doing classical music, yeah. Also, it's a, um, it's a tribute to Johann Sebastian Bach, who was a disruptor for his time. He was uh, creating music that people didn't understand, but then when they did understand it, it was, wow, this is brilliant. Are you a disruptor? I would like to think so. Um, How so? People don't normally listen to classical music. I would love to be the entrance ramp for more people. Bach's dexterity on the keys has also landed him on stage with artists like Rihanna. Searching for the right, but it keeps avoiding me. Which is very classical. <laughs> and he records covers to post online. When you're listening to popular music, do you hear the classical parts of it? It's still the same harmonic structure, still the melodic structure. It's just a different version of it. What do you do with Cardi B? One of the cool things that can happen is, you know, the, the bass line is... Which is super cool. <laughs> Bach now has something to say with what he describes as a neoclassical sound that's all his own on Black Book Deluxe. My album is inspired by the movie Green Book, which is the story of Don Shirley and his trailblazing spirit to go to the South, the Deep South, at a time where it wasn't safe, but to bring music there. What are you trying to convey with these songs? These songs are reflections of where we are mm -hmm. as a society. They're also reflections of things and experiences that I've had myself. Bach gave me a sampling of his compositions created during the pandemic lockdown, starting with The Hustle Is Real. So what's the inspiration for that? If you walk out in the street in New York City, that's what it feels like. It feels like people moving. Now, a completely, obviously different tone and, and, and message, George, George Floyd and the, and the struggle for equality. I want to present a sense of hope. You know, like, let's be hopeful that tomorrow this doesn't happen again. Where do you want to go from here? I just want more people to be able to enjoy this music and to understand that, you know, classical music is for everyone. It is not just for, for uh, one group of people, it's mm -hmm. for everyone. Coming up, how this 11-year-old became a pool shark with a very fitting nickname. That's all coming up after the break.
We're back here on The Boost, and there is a young CEO driven to make a difference in the world as the founder of the first all-electric rideshare company. Morgan Radford went for a ride with her. Check it out. Twenty-seven-year-old Raven Hernandez has always been driven. So I heard these things go pretty fast. They do. Oh! <laughs> now she's in the driver's seat. It's getting back a little bit of charge. As the founder and CEO of an all-electric rideshare company called Earth Rides. When was your first time in an electric vehicle ever? Period. Ever that I drove was 2018. Just four years ago. Just four years ago, and now we are showing EVs and highlighting them all over the country. In 2020, Raven took her passion into overdrive. Hi, I'm Raven Hernandez, founder and CEO of Earth Rides, and founded the first rideshare company in the U.S. to offer an all-electric fleet of vehicles. We don't market ourselves as just an eco-friendly company. Mm -hmm. For us, it's really important about the safety and the quality of the rides. The majority of our passengers, they're looking for something better. A lot of people who get started in this space, they have some connection to, to financing or venture mm. capital firms. Did you have any of that? I had hustle. Uh, <laughs> my mother and my grandmother were both single mothers. They uh, taught themselves English. You know, they, they really hustled for everything they had. And I think that grit allows me to be where I'm at today. But you had to sort of open your own doors to get there, it sounds like. It's definitely opening a lot of doors. I mean, it's knocking, right? It's knocking on as many doors as possible and seeing which ones are going to open. And not every room is meant for you. A journey she started as the child of immigrants growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. My family is from Panama uh, in a town called Santiago. You know, it's, it's amazing and it's beautiful just to see how far we've come along in three generations. But like all journeys, this one had its turns. I had no idea this was in my future. I'm a licensed attorney, but along the way, I saw this opportunity to bring clean technology to communities that don't normally see it. Where did you find the drive? I mean, when I think about a hard day at work, I, I know that I, I have it way easier than my mother or my abuela ever did. I mean, my grandmother left her jungle and where she lived at 10 years old to go find work and support her family. And so when I think about getting to be in spaces like this with you, I mean, it's, it's humbling and it, it just makes me uh, fuel my own fire to keep going. A fire that's helped the company expand from its home base in Nashville to three cities, serving more than 300,000 passengers to date. An accomplishment that's even more remarkable given the state of the industry, where women currently make up less than 30% of the clean energy workforce and Latino founders accounted for just over 2% of all venture capital funding last year. A moment ago, you described having to knock on doors and that sometimes the rooms weren't always intended for you. When you got to those rooms, did you see other Latinas or Latinos? Not often, and so getting to be the first Latina in the room as an entrepreneur showing up in this space on behalf of my family and everyone else in the community, it's quite a load, and I always think about that and understand that I'm not the last, right? I might be the first, but I'm definitely not the last bringing others on a journey that's just beginning. Focus on what makes you uniquely you. Find strength in what makes you different and then run into that room and knock that door down. Next, an 11 year old who took a cue from his dad to become a billiards phenom. He's a fierce competitor and he's even earned a fitting nickname. Meet Jaws. D'Angelo Spain is making waves in the pool world. Pool, as in billiards. Nice shot there with Jaws. At just 11 years old, he's a force on the table. How good are you? I can be better, but I'm good. What's your rank in your age group? One, first. You're number one. You're the best in your age group. Yes. I would say that's a little bit better than, than just being pretty good. Yes, it is. D'Angelo might be humble off the table, but unbeatable when he picks up that stick. His dad, Frank, giving him the nickname Jaws. D'Angelo Spain, they call him Jaws. You know, there's a lot of sharks out here, so he's one of them. So if he's going to be a shark, let's call him Jaws. And Jaws comes out firing. D'Angelo's love for pool started when he was just four years old inspired by watching his dad play in leagues. So when the family thought about buying a karaoke machine, D'Angelo suggested they get a pool table instead. I 
pack a bench stuff by saying a pack a bench or pool, then that would be better than just thinking karaoke machine. We can get that later. <laughs> You convinced them that you would get better at pool than they would get at singing. Yes. The pool table became a fixture in the family living room. This forced Frank to take on a new role, coach. I've never seen that kind of focus before out of a four-year-old. I told him like one thing, it led to another. The next thing you know, I'm teaching him everything that I know, like within a year. He started competing at age six. Now. He takes on other young athletes in the 13 and under division of the Junior International Championships. How competitive is that group? It's real competitive and real strong. It's made up of uh, the best juniors throughout the whole country. So at every tournament, these kids are breaking it. D'Angelo brings that same confidence and competitive edge when he plays against adults decades older. Good shoot, good shoot. When I'm playing as an adult, I feel like it's a little easier than playing against a junior because the juniors have had chances to practice all day, and I know they probably will, but the adults is probably going to care. He's already racked up many awards, and it wasn't long before his passion for pool infected the whole family. We had no clue the whole entire family would be playing. And it's funny, they have a league, we have a pool league where they're all on the same team. I had my own team, but now I'm going to join their team because I want to play with them, because they win everything. So basically you got tired of losing. Yeah, I did. This pool shark has his eyes set on big goals, like going pro, but for now, enjoying every moment, sinking every ball and crushing the competition. What advice would you have to, to a young person like yourself? I would tell them to every, practice, try to practice every single day, and you want to stay focused. We've got one more video for you. We hope it brightens your day. Take a look. A high school teacher in Michigan, you're going to love this, found out he has a lot of people who care about him after leaving his 12th and final round of chemotherapy for colon cancer. He had a huge group of supporters outside the hospital, the medical center, waiting to surprise him. Take a look. Aww. <laughs> Brendan Harrison greeted by friends and families and students. The varsity baseball team was all there. Of course, those are the guys he coaches. He got emotional. They clapped, cheered him on, gave him a hug. Ah, uh, like, that's it. Oh, always leaves us with a smile. Well, that is it for us for today. We'll see you next week with more of The Boost on Today All Day. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. 
I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Each week, I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day, the great outdoors. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock and we are back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Summer is heating up and whether you're headed to hike, surf, or just lay on the beach, I've got everything you need to enjoy the great outdoors. From lanterns that are gonna take your trip from camping to glamping, to a car adapter that will keep the kids entertained for the entire road trip. I cannot wait to get started. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Okay, so no one likes mosquito bites or smelly repellent spray. So this first pick is a game changer for those days outside in the summer. According to the brand, they are deep free mosquito repellent patches. They are peel and stick patches that are made with plant-based ingredients like citronella and peppermint essential oils, and they're waterproof. The brand said they repel mosquitoes for three feet for up to six to eight hours. So you can spend more time outside. The brand also says that they're pediatrician approved and safe enough for kids to use. All you have to do is peel one of these stickers and you can put it on your shirt or even your bag to stay protected all day long. I am so excited for summer road trips. And if you are gonna have a car full just like mine, this little car gadget is gonna come in handy when everyone's electronics need a charge on the go. The car power inverter has two AC 110 volt outlets and four USB port chargers. And it's so compact and lightweight, so you can charge all of the family's essentials like laptops, tablets, and cell phones. All right, and whether you are camping or hitting the beach, this next one is a two-in-one gadget you're gonna love. It is a lantern and a phone charger that actually folds down flat and then pops up when you need to use it as a lantern. It has a small solar panel so you can recharge it in a pinch when you're out in the sun. But when it's blown up, it's so lightweight that even the kids can use it. And according to the brand, it's 100% waterproof. And in the dark, this is what it looks like. Okay, this next one you guys have to see to believe. It is an inflatable couch air lounger that provides portable lounging wherever your outdoor adventure takes you. Did I mention you don't even need a pump to blow it up? You guys have to see this. It only takes a few minutes and all you have to do is take it out of this cool little carrying case that it comes with, unclip it, and then whisk it through the air to inflate it. The trick though is to trap air by closing the sleeve, opening little by little. So once it's blown up, according to the brand, it stays that way for up to five or six hours. Plus, it has a pillow shaped headrest so you get support from head to toe. And yes, I've tried it and I actually think it's pretty comfortable. Another summer friendly must have is a pair of lightweight waterproof sneakers. From cruises to beach trips, these are a versatile sneaker that you're gonna wanna wear if you're outdoors near some water. These are great because the brand says that these have an anti-slip outsole with a strong track adhesion. So when you're wet, they're comfortable and you can wear these as walking shoes as well because according to the brand, they dry pretty quickly. Okay, so this umbrella is one of those finds I didn't know I needed until I found it. It is called the Sport Brella and it is a clamp-on shade canopy that provides shade wherever you need it. It has a unique heavy duty universal clamp that you can use on square and tube shaped surfaces. So what does that mean? You can clamp it on anything from a beach chair to a golf bag and even benches. It's also really unique because it has a 360 degree swivel, two button hinges, so you can get shade wherever you need it. And if that wasn't enough, this umbrella, according to the brand, it's made with a UPF 50 material that's gonna provide some serious sun protection. All right, and from fashion to backyard fun, I bet you've been wondering why there's a huge rainbow behind me. Well, this rainbow arc will make your home the place to be this summer. It's a large inflatable sprinkler that all the kids in the neighborhood are absolutely gonna love. And you don't need a huge yard to get in on the fun. 
It's about four and a half feet tall and five and a half feet wide, so it's perfect for the kids to have fun in the sun without the need to drive to the pool or the beach. Let's run through the products one more time. The Evolve Together Mosquito Repellent Patches, the Car Power Inverter, the Luminate Solar Lantern, the Wika Po Inflatable Lounger, the Quick Drying Water Shoes, the Sportbrella, and the H for Happy Gigantic Rainbow Sprinkler. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that is it for our editor's picks. Up next, Nicole in Lobu is talking to dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb, who is sharing her favorite skincare products to protect your skin in the great outdoors. Plus, she'll spice up your outdoor adventures with some makeup products to keep you looking fresh all day long. Don't go away. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. The warm weather is upon us and people everywhere are looking to soak up some sun. Now, if you want to update your beauty routine for the warm weather, boy, do I have products that are just right for you. Whether you're planning a day trip or a road trip, most of us are looking to protect our skin while also looking for that grand adventure. So I brought in expert dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb, to share her favorite buzzworthy products for the great outdoors. Dr. Lamb, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so when it comes to being outdoors, what are some top essentials for staying safe in the sun? The main essentials for staying safe in the sun are sunscreen, 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 and sun avoidance. So you don't wanna be in the sun between the hours of usually 10 a.m. 
to 2 p.m. They say if your shadow is actually shorter than you, mm -hmm. that means the sun is really too high. Oh. Yeah, also, also if you um, are out, you want to wear some protective clothing, you want to do broad brim hats, mm -hmm. you want to wear long sleeve clothing. Actually, a lot of clothing has SPF in it now. So those are really some of the mainstays to staying safe in the sun. That's good to know. I'm going to spread that to my entire family. I did not know that. Now, we all go to the dentist and we go see our family doctor, mm -hmm. but how often should we be going to see our dermatologist? Most people should check in with their dermatologist yearly. Um, sometimes it depends on your risk factors. So if you have lighter skin, if you spent more time in the sun, if you've had a lot of blistering sunburns, you might want to go every six to nine months. Oh. But most folks, especially over about the age of 30, need to check in yearly. Yearly, okay, good to know. I'm gonna add that to my calendar. All right, let's get into some of these picks. I'm so excited about everything you brought. So let's start with the first one. So this sunscreen, I'm fascinated. The fact that it's like an oily substance, Tell me about it. So what I love about this Melee sunscreen is that it's actually an oil base. It doesn't have mineral oil, but it's clear, it's sheer. You can put it on, you can put it on under makeup, um, and it really provides that great SPF. And as you apply it, you see how it has a sheen, yeah. but it creates good moisture without leaving any white cast. That's some of the biggest feedback I get from patients about yeah. sunscreen, is they don't like that white chalky feel. And this, look at how great that just blends into your skin. I mean. um, you get the moisture, you get that glow, um, without clogging your pores. That's what I love about it. It's so beautiful. I love this sheen. I'm obsessed with yeah. that already. Now, can everybody use this? I know it's maybe for black and brown people. Mele is a brand that actually was formulated for melanin-rich skin, but yeah. I like people to know that this is great for any skin type. All right, let's move on to the next product here. I love that this mineral sunscreen has no cast as well. What mm -hmm. other benefits does this mm -hmm. one have? So what's great about this Bliss Sunblock is that it is mineral-based. So the key with mineral-based, there's pretty much two different types of sunblock you can have. A chemical-based sunscreen or sunblock or a mineral-based one. This one is fully mineral-based, which is good for the coral reef, all of those types of things. Patients ask me about that a lot. They want to make sure that the sunblocks are good for the environment. Mm -hmm. But what's great about this one is the way they've processed it, like you said, no cast either. So if you try that one on, yeah. um, you're not going to have that white cast. It's good for all skin types. It also has an ingredient in it that actually absorbs oil and actually makes your pores look smaller. Yeah. Um, so that's like a two for one. That's a win-win yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Now there's a misconception. Can we talk about this elephant in the room that yeah. black and brown folks don't have to oh, wear no. sunscreen? <laughs> we have to wear sunscreen if we're having those grand adventures Absolutely. outdoors, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, even though skin that's darker does have some built-in SPF protection, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we don't need extra. So it's only about SPF 13 you get when you have darker skin. So this, for example, is SPF 30. You need that extra sunblock, and that's what's going to prevent us from looking old faster. So that's really the key. Dr. Lamb, thank you for clearing that up. And by the way, you may have earned a commission on a Bliss products on your site. Let's move on to this eyeshadow stick. I want to look fresh when I'm out there in the great outdoors. Tell me about this one. All right, so what's nice about this, you put it on um, and in a little bit of time it sets and you can get in the water and you can be out there. Nobody wants to be in the sun or exercising or sweating and having their makeup running all over their face. So this one is great. It really has staying power. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, people want to look glam when they're on the beach, out in the sun. And so this is really formulated exactly for those purposes. But look at the color payoff as well. I know, they have a broad range of colors. Yeah. So you don't have to sacrifice sacrifice beauty for convenience and safety, so that's important. <laughs> I love how small and portable it is. Yeah. All right, let's move on to other makeup products as mm -hmm. well. When it comes to applying makeup for the great outdoors, right, it's sometimes you wonder, is it light and breathable? Is this one light and breathable? So this MAC foundation is light and breathable. I mean, a lot of people know MAC for their staying power, their ability to hold up under lights, camera action, yeah. um, but this one also holds up in the water, which is really fantastic. Um, and it is breathable, is light, and again, also you're not going to find it all over your shirt mm -hmm. um, because it sets as well. Look at how it is just melting into my skin. Absolutely love this one. So, Dr. Lamb, I have a confession. Mm -hmm. I've actually never used self-tanner before. <laughs> how does this work? All right. So, the way self-tanner works is you apply it. There's a chemical compound in there, and if you apply it day after day, particularly this one, which gives you that gradual glow, so after about five to seven days, you're going to get some increased pigment, um, a nice glow. As a dermatologist, we always say the 
only safe tan is from a bottle, okay? <laughs> okay? So that's the only kind of tan I ever want anybody of any skin type to get. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, this is gradual, so you're not gonna have those streaks that you sometimes can get with some sunless tanners, and it'll just give you that nice, ready to be out in the sun, but again, safely tan. I love this, and I love how also that anyone can use this, mm -hmm. right, because I just put it on my hands, and I love how it just blends right in seamlessly, too. Mm -hmm. That's the key for so many of these products. We don't want to have you do a lot of work. We want it to be a seamless and have you able to enjoy the sun in the summer. I can't wait for that. All right, so sunburn is one of just the most annoying <laughs> things ever, right, that you can experience. How does this product here from Clarence help to soothe the skin? Yes, so first, I mean, for me, a dermatologist, that's like sacrilege. I never want to have somebody come in and say that they got a burn. But if you did, ideally you will have used some of these first two products to avoid that. But if you do, um, you want something that's gonna be soothing, cooling. This product has a lot of aloe in it. So aloe has a very high water content, um, which is gonna be soothing for you. And one little trick I say is to put that in the refrigerator before you apply it. So when it's actually physically cool, that helps as well. Okay, so do you use this before you get the sunburn or you use it after? No, technically you're supposed to use it after. It's okay. actually called after sun. But again, hopefully you've done the right things. You've applied your sunblock. You want to always apply it about 20 minutes before you go outside. You've mm -hmm. worn your hat. You've avoided the sun. It smells great as well. Mm -hmm. Lamb, I love all your selections. I am ready to get out there and just be out there on my great adventure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Oh yeah, our pleasure. Now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the Melee No Shade Sunscreen Oil, the Bliss Black Star Sunscreen, the Cargo Cosmetics Swimmables Cream Eyeshadow Stick, the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Radiant Sheer Foundation, the Jergens Natural Glow Self Tan and Moisturizer, and the Clarence SOS Sunburn Soother Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, you'll never believe what's in style this summer. Chassie Post is here with the hottest trends for the great outdoors, like the chic fanny pack that's making a comeback. Don't go away. Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and today 
We've been talking about hitting the roads or trails and taking in the great outdoors. And I can't wait to show you the trends that will have you looking your best while enjoying some fun in the sun. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. So let's start off with the cutest matching jacket and short set from Old Navy that is the definition of sporty chic. I love it when brands take functional high-tech performance wear and make it fashion. So let's first talk about the jacket. It's an easy, lightweight, half-zip pullover with a drawstring hood. And check out the color blocking. Such a big trend. I am obsessed with these fun, punchy oranges. So cute. And if you're more of a monochromatic gal, it also comes in a solid black. But also, I am a huge fan of this silhouette. It is so easy to wear. I mean, slightly oversized with that on-trend crop that hits right at the waist, which I think makes it look really flattering. And it even has a drawstring hem. And this fabric, it's fabulous. It's called Stretch Tech. And just like the name suggests, it's got a great stretch to it. And the brand says that it's also breathable with quick drying powers and UV sun protection built right in. But that's just the jacket. Let's complete the set with the shorts. I mean, they're made out of the same stretch tech fabric, but they have an additional feature. Old Navy says that they're also water repellent. And the cut of these shorts is so flattering. They're high-waisted, and they've got a really nice, generous, wide leg opening. And both of those features combined make your legs look really great and elongated. These shorts also have room for all your stuff, loads of pocket, and there's even one hidden stash zip pocket that can hold your phone. But if you're not a matching set fan, no worries. These two pieces also work great as separates to mix and match with the rest of your closet and come in tons of summer colors in sizes ranging from extra small to 4X. So we're gonna look great out there this summer. <laughs> Workout or weekend, we've got you covered with this sporty set. Next, one of my absolute favorite sporty must-haves and one of the summer's biggest trends, the exercise dress. And just like the yoga pant, you don't actually have to be exercising to wear it. So whether you're running around town doing errands, heading to the gym, or hitting the tennis court or golf course, the exercise dress is going to keep you looking and feeling cool. Now, I've actually got three of these very same dresses and they make a really great warm weather uniform. And I'm not alone. We've seen it all over social media. And once you try one, you'll see what everybody's so excited about. I mean, first of all, it's got the best of two worlds. You've got this easy A-line dress, which is inspired by tennis core slash all things tennis style, which is a huge trend right now, combined with the practicality and relative modesty of a skirt. See right under the skirt? You've got biking shorts with two pockets. It's almost like shapewear. And this one's from Amazon and is a really great example of the trend. So next, we've got two versatile pairs of performance pants that you are going to love for all of your outdoor activities this summer. So first up, meet the Climatrail zip-off pant. Now this pan is by Eddie Bauer and it's genius and perfect for those days where it starts out cool and gets warmer as the day goes on. And here's how they work. They start out as a full length pant and then as the temps rise, you can just zip off the bottoms and you got a pair of shorts. And how cool is that? And check out this fabric. The brand says it's made out of a four way stretch that's also water repellent and has UPF 50 plus sun protection. And did we mention that they were also flattering? We give a thumbs up to the mid-rise silhouette. We've also got another equally versatile outdoor pant from Amazon that is a number one bestseller. These easy to wear joggers are also made out of a performance fabric that the brand says is lightweight, quick dry, and water resistant and shoppers rave about how comfortable these pants are. According to the brand, the fabric has 8% spandex and it's got an easy elastic waistband with a little drawstring so you can adjust the fit. And check out all these pockets. 
You've got two side zip, two cargo, and one back zip pocket. So no wonder they're so popular. And yes, these pants are perfect for outdoor adventures, hiking, working out, walking, you name it. But they also make excellent travel and lounge pants. Now, if you've been looking for an easy and stylish way to protect yourself from the sun-strong UV rays this summer, then you're going to love these multitasking swim tees from Land's End. They're designed to just wear over your swimsuit top. And according to Land's End, they're made out of a moisture-wicking stretch fabric that keeps you dry, uncomfortable on land. The brand says, besides providing more coverage from the sun than a typical bathing suit, that they also offer UPF 50 protection, which really comes in handy if you spend a lot of time at the pool or the beach. Plus, I am loving their surfer chic vibe. I mean, look at these stripes here. That's where rash guards actually got their start, protecting surfers from rough boards. And now they've gone mainstream, protecting us all from the sun. And I'm really into the classic crew neck style. And you can choose from either short sleeves or long sleeves. And they come in so many vibrant colors and patterns. And the best part, they're not just for swimming. They also work as a colorful cover-up. Moving on to New England chic, meet the Marley Lily monogrammed Nantucket cover-up. And she is cute. We all need a great cover-up and we could not be more obsessed with this one. Yes, we love the loose fitting, flattering V-neck silhouette the easy butterfly sleeves, and the classic seersucker print fabric. But let's be honest, this cover-up had us at the word monogram. See right here on the hem? You can choose from several monogram styles and three pretty colorways. The blue seersucker, we've got the pink seersucker, and we've also got a mint seersucker. Plus, talk about beach to brunch and beyond. You can throw on this fabulous cover-up over your suit, add a pair of gold hoop sandals, and you are ready for dinner. Just like that. And if you really want to do it up, they even make a matching monogram straw hat in my favorite surfer style. Talk about fun in the sun. Next, don't get me started on my love of fanny packs slash belt bags, or in this case, the bum bag, because I really, really love them. And there's a reason that this 90s style is back in such a big way. They're just so incredibly useful. Now, this is the Moonbeam bum bag, and I am a huge fan of anything that allows me to go hands-free. And I have to tell you guys, I wear my fanny pack every single day. And in my humble opinion, this sporty style is the ultimate in hands-free, utilitarian style. Now, we found these adorable takes at Madewell. They're designed by a Los Angeles-based brand called Lola, known for their stylish carryalls inspired by California beach life. Now, they've got a classic half moon shape, thus the name, and you can wear them around your waist, a la the classic bum bag, or you can wear them over your shoulder as a crossbody. And it's the perfect size for your on-the-go essentials. This new collection is designed from recycled nylon with cool details like a chunky zipper, and I love the bold candy colors. And of course, one of this bag's finest virtues is its versatility. With that hands-free storage, this is the bag you want coming along for the ride, whether you're headed on an outdoor adventure, to a fun barbecue, or to the grocery store. And last but not least, Put your hands together for one of my favorite summer innovations, the ponytail hat. This hat just might be my favorite summer accessory ever. It's genius and hysterical, and I've seen the ponytail baseball hat before, but never the ponytail sun hat. Thank goodness someone came along and designed a hat that doesn't make me choose between my beloved high pony and sun protection. And let's face it, getting your hair off your neck feels a whole lot cooler when it's scorching hot out there. This hat also has a lot of bells and whistles. It's got a good wide brim, three and a half inches, breathable mesh sides, and both the hat and the chin strap are adjustable. Plus, the brand says that it's waterproof, quick drying, and even has a built-in sweatband. 
It's also packable, so you can fold it up and throw it in your bag and go. Plus, it comes in over 16 different colors. Yes, this is a hat that both you and your ponytail are gonna love. Okay, so let's run through these products one more time. We've got the Old Navy Color Block Jacket and Shorts, the Amazon Sleeveless Workout Dress, the Eddie Bauer Zip Off Pants, the Libin Cargo Joggers, We've got the Land's Inn Rash Guards, the Marley Lily Monogram Hat and Cover-Up, the Madewell Lola Bum Bag, and the Ponytail Sun Hat. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites, so tune in for an all-new episode of Shop All Day. Oh, today all day, summer's officially here, so get outside, do something fun. Up next, Sama Dada is sharing the ultimate menu for a perfect picnic party in the park. This is sort of like playing with Play-Doh, but it tastes good and it's edible. Play-Doh is not edible, I don't think. Play-Doh is edible? Yeah. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's no way. I just learned that Play-Doh is edible. Don't eat it though, that's disgusting. Just eat these instead. In the summer months especially, it's really nice to get outside and take advantage of your local parks. And listen, I am your dream picnic guest because I never come without the most important thing, food. So I'm gonna show you how to make two of my favorite recipes for your next hashtag picnic party, my easy homemade turmeric hummus, and my favorite spiced chickpea burgers with a delicious red pepper sauce. Some may say it's sacrilegious to make hummus with canned chickpeas, but you know what? Convenience is a gorgeous thing, and you can still get a really delicious result with the canned chickpeas that have been sort of hibernating at the back of your pantry for quite some time. If you're freaked out at all by making hummus at home, just don't be, because you know what? All you need to make it is a blender. So let's start. Starting with my canned chickpeas, adding these straight to the blender. They're so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and add my tahini. You cannot have hummus without tahini. It is like peanut butter and jelly, you know what I mean? So don't forget it. You just simply can't have hummus without it. It makes it nice and earthy and creamy and flavorful. Okay. You've got those really savory flavors from that tahini, from the chickpeas, so now we need a little bit of tartness and that's where our lemon juice comes in. Just gonna roll the lemon to release some of that juice. Lemon juice going straight in my blender. It's gonna make this hummus really bright and zingy. I will warn you, once you learn how to make this hummus at home, you may never go back to store-bought. I'm sorry, but I'm just not sorry. Perfect. Lemon is done. Now I'm gonna add in my garlic. I like using raw garlic here because it has a really punchy, flavorful taste and we want all of that flavor in this hummus. Here's where we really spice it up, okay? We're gonna add my three favorite spices. I'm adding some cumin. Adding some paprika for a little hint of smoke and spice. And what would this turmeric hummus be without turmeric? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm adding my turmeric in. Another reason I wanted to make a turmeric hummus is because of that gorgeous yellow color. So that's really gonna give that hummus that bright pop. It's gonna look really good on your table, I promise. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. and some freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm just gonna blend. In order to get this hummus super smooth, we're gonna add a little bit of water, tablespoon by tablespoon, until it reaches our desired consistency. For me, that's very smooth and velvety and luxurious.
starting with just a bit. The trick with this hummus to get it super velvety smooth is when you reach your desired consistency, blend it for an extra three or four more times. That's gonna make it even more smooth. Like, look at that. I really cannot wait. Let me just adjust to taste. See if it needs anything. I mean, come on, it's perfect. I'm gonna add the hummus into my bowl. Have you ever seen anything this smooth in your life? No, right? Okay. Now, let me show you how to adorn this hummus. I'm gonna smooth it out. I created a little swoosh so that the olive oil and spices have a little home. Drizzle some olive oil on top. Sprinkling with a little bit of za'atar. If you don't know what za'atar is, it's a Middle Eastern spice blend with sumac, sesame seeds, and another host of spices. It's so good. If you don't have za'atar, don't worry. You can totally omit it, but I think it tastes amazing with it. I'm gonna add a touch of paprika just for a little color. This works as a nice contrast to that bright yellow that the turmeric gives this hummus. I mean, look at how pretty that is, right? But we're not done yet. I have this gorgeous platter of fresh vegetables here and I'm just gonna cut them and adorn them around my hummus. If you don't feel like slicing your veggies yourself, no worries, you can buy it pre-cut. I've got some time on my hands. I mean, this is art. Monet, is that you? It's me. I think I made a masterpiece. I'm not trying to be conceited, but like, are we all looking at the same thing here? Doesn't this make you wanna be one of my picnic guests? Maybe? So pretty. Need to take a picture. My phone really does eat first. I know that's cliche, but it's kind of true. I'm, oh my God, I was immediately taken aback by how pretty this looked. <laughs> ah, I cracked myself up. I'm taking like 20,000 pictures. <laughs> I think 12 would have been fine, but... <laughs> okay. I think I got the shot. Can confidently say I got the shot. <sighs> I'm gearing up. Okay. This is the most both exciting and tragic part of making hummus is that part where you ruin the art. But it's okay. This is what it's for. Okay, I'm going in. Did that make you all feel things? Because I just felt really emotional. <laughs> okay, ready to taste. Mm. It's so good. Something so flavorful paired with a simple, crisp vegetable, just like, these vegetables just gotta glow up. Thanks to this hummus, it's art, it's art. No picnic would be complete without a sandwich, so I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite chickpea burger with a red pepper sauce. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients.
turn your favorite hummus into my red pepper special sauce, first cut two peppers in half and de-seed them. Then roast the red peppers at 450 degrees for about 25 minutes. After removing the peppers from the oven, they'll need to be steamed for 10 to 15 minutes. You can do this by inverting a glass bowl over the peppers onto a cutting board. Sealing the peppers creates steam, making it easier for the skins to peel right off. Remove the pepper peels and discard. Yep, they're a little slippery. Roughly chop the red peppers into large pieces. Add two cups of your favorite hummus to a high-speed blender. Homemade or store-bought will do just fine. Now, drop in your roasted red peppers. Blend the mixture until it's well combined and super smooth. Now, this special sauce is ready to be spread on anything your heart desires. Having a good veggie burger recipe in your back pocket is sort of like having your best friend on speed dial. It's pretty useful. And I don't know if people are really using speed dial anymore, but you get the point. My chickpea burgers are deliciously spiced, they're super hearty, and they're perfect for when you want something substantial that still happens to be plant-based. First things first, I want this burger to have a lot of complex layers of flavor, so I'm gonna saute some onion and garlic to put in it. Just gonna dice my red onion. I'm only using half here. I'm using a red onion here because I really like that it adds that nice sweetness. It's gonna be so good in this veggie burger. Also aesthetically speaking, I know it's what's on the inside that counts, but aesthetically speaking, these red onions are really pretty. <laughs> that purpley red. We love it. Red onions are diced. I'm now gonna mince my garlic. Great way to mince garlic, all you're gonna do is take your clove, use the flat edge of your knife, get some of your aggression out, and then start mincing. I'm gonna do this with all of the rest of my cloves. Garlic? It's our friend, okay? You may smell like garlic for three days after cooking with it, but it's worth it. It's worth the price you have to pay. You wanna extract all of that garlicky flavor, it's so good. 
And we're mincing it really finely so that we can get out all of that flavor, all of that aroma, all of that garlic perfume that will plague you for the next three days. <laughs> all right. Now I'm gonna heat my pan and add some olive oil. My oil is shimmering, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Got some resistant ones in here. Don't worry, you're gonna become a burger. Something to celebrate. All right. We want these onions to be tender, translucent, starting to brown around the edges. When we get a little bit of that caramelization, it's gonna impart so much flavor onto these burgers. And you might be wondering, why didn't we add the garlic with the onions? But we can't do that because the garlic takes a lot less time to cook. So if we added with the onions, it would burn. And that's not cute. My onions look perfect. They're nice and golden brown around the edges. They're tender, translucent, which means it's time for the garlic. Doesn't need too much time to become a little brown, about two minutes. Don't forget, and I'm reminding you here to season with salt and pepper. Flavor is our friend. We always want more of it. Okay, this looks amazing. The garlic is nice and golden, it's got some color. I'm gonna set this aside to cool and then get to work on the base of my burger. For the base of this burger, I'm starting with some cashews. I know that sounds crazy, but cashews are buttery and delicious. They really allow this veggie burger to be hearty and meaty without any actual meat. So I'm gonna add that into my food processor. I'm using raw cashews here, unsalted, completely raw. This is important. All I'm going to do is process these cashews into a nice fine powder, kind of like a flour. Looks pretty good. All right, this looks perfect. Let me just show you the texture real quick. It's sort of like this nice flour, you can see. It's going to be a really hearty base for this burger. Okay, cashews are done. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of my ingredients. Now I'm gonna add some flaxseed meal. This is gonna be really great as a binder for these burgers. It's sort of like a vegan replacement for an egg. Okay, looking cozy in there. And because I can't live my life without any spice, it just simply is not possible. I'm gonna add my spices. Starting with a little paprika. And just know, these spices aren't gonna make it spicy, right? It's gonna be flavorful, it's gonna add a lot of body and taste. That's what we like. A little bit of turmeric. Yum. Some cumin. And finally, some coriander. This is a chickpea burger, so we gotta add our chickpeas. These are just drained. <laughs> and now we're gonna process. It's okay if this mixture isn't fully pulverized. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of that chickpea texture. So don't sweat it. You've got a little chickpea hanging out in there. Now, I'm just gonna add some olive oil and then, remember my onions and garlic from earlier? These are going in there as well. A little olive oil. And then, my onions and garlic. Perfect. Okay, you probably guessed this, but 
We're gonna process one more time. My mixture is looking amazing. I'm gonna transfer it to a bowl. Just transferred my patty mixture into my bowl and you'll notice it's kind of thick and sticky which is great because then we'll be able to form it into patties really nicely. Because I want this to have a little bit of zest, a little bit of something herby, I'm just gonna add some cilantro in here. You can totally use parsley if cilantro freaks you out, I won't judge you. I'm just gonna roughly tear them. I like those big pieces of herbs, but if you want it smaller, you can totally chop it. Okay. Mix that in. And now we're ready to form them into patties. A couple of things I wanna do before I form these into patties. First, remove all my rings. <laughs> so I wear like 12,000. And now I'm gonna oil my hands just to make sure that nothing sticks to them. Just a little on here, just a little. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. I think you're moisturizing your hands, but you're really just prepping to make your burgers. Okay, here we go. It's very fun, very therapeutic, and look how well this sticks together. So I'm gonna form these into like a little ball at first and then I'll flatten them out into patties. You can really make these as big or as small as you'd like. I'm going for like a major burger situation, but you can also make little small burgers as well if you want little bite-sized snacks, if you wanna throw them on a salad. They're very versatile. See how virtually nothing is sticking to my hands? You can thank the extra virgin olive oil for that. You've got a lot of really hearty elements in this burger, the cashews, the chickpeas. It allows it to stick together, but also allows you to feel really satiated. It's really delicious and just a really great way to eat a veggie burger. That's exciting. I'm gonna put these in the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Make sure you flip them once halfway through baking. And if you don't wanna eat them now, don't worry. You can freeze them for another day. They're perfect for meal prep. I mean, is this a joke? Look at this, that crisp golden exterior. It looks so beautiful. If you did want it to be a little more crisp on the outside, feel free to sear them. But to me, this looks perfect. It's time to assemble my burger. I'm very excited. I've got my bun, got my tomatoes, my lettuce, and I have a little red pepper special sauce to go in the burger as well. So I'm gonna go for it. Got my bun. I like a lot of sauce, so I'm gonna go ahead and be generous here. 
This is gonna add more flavor, a little bite, and some nice color too. I'm gonna spread both sides of the burger, both buns, here as well. The red pepper sauce is like tangy, a little sweet. These are roasted red peppers. Okay. Now for my star. Go ahead and add one of my burgers. Straight onto my bun. It's like it was meant to be there. It's almost upsetting how perfect it looks on that burger bun. Okay. Gonna add a little fresh tomato. And some lettuce for some greens in my life. Okay, time for that other bun. I mean, come on, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Look at the colors. I gotta take a picture. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay. Oh my God, look at that. All of those layers of flavor. That looks really good. <laughs> okay, is it time? I'm nervous I'm not gonna eat this in a cute way at all, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna go from this side. This seems more approachable to me. Okay, here we go. Mm. I mean, this chickpea burger is so well spiced, so well seasoned. I think I need another bite. It seems like I must take another bite. Okay. Mmm. It's just simply not right. It's simply not right how good it is. That red pepper special sauce though, ties everything together. See, this is why I'm everyone's favorite picnic guest. I do stuff like this. And then they always invite me again. <laughs> you can be that person too. This is, I'm speechless, I'm speechless, I'm speechless. Okay, I'm, I'm going in. You, someone has to stop me, someone has to stop me. I'm gonna keep eating this. No one's gonna stop me? Okay. <laughs> All right. Going to Central Park is one of my favorite things to do in New York. It's the perfect place for a picnic party. I invited my sister and my best friend for a little afternoon lunch. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Hey guys, look at my crudite pata. Yeah, I'm eyeballing it. I cannot live my life without hummus, and I love bringing it to a picnic because it's easy to pack and snack on. We love a fresh veg. Mm -hmm. And a yeah, steak hummus cream. is so good, yeah. don't you think? Hummus is so good. <laughs> <laughs> my chickpea burger is one of my favorite plant-based meals. It's hearty and comforting, plus it's great hot or room temp. Oh, I like that you're taking photos. That makes me happy. Are you cheers. Okay, cheers. 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 <laughs> it's like Shake Shack, yeah. honestly. It looks like Shake Shack. It's nice. Okay. Doesn't it? This uh -huh. looks fake. It's like a Krabby Patty. <laughs> mm. There's nothing I love more than sharing my food with the people that I love, and a picnic is a great place to do it. Let's do it. Okay. Aww. Hi guys, welcome to The Boost. We got a fun show for you today, including a few barbers spreading sheer positivity with their communities. But first, Harry Smith takes us to Austin, Texas for a look at one novel program that's providing shelter and community. In this otherwise unremarkable area of Austin, Texas, there is a community that very well might be an answer, even the answer, to a problem plaguing cities coast to coast. And we have a phrase that housing alone will never solve homelessness, but community will. 
community. It's about community. It's about people being lonely, man. We're in the middle of the Mobile Loaves and Fishes Community First Village with founder and CEO Alan Graham. What started with a few used trailers has now grown to scores of tiny houses. There will be more than 500 units by the end of the year. There's a waiting list of 160. As for rules, restrictions for drug or alcohol dependency do not exist. Zero. We live in a world where we have been experimenting with prohibiting those things for over 100 years here in the United States. And how successful are we? The village is faith-based. Its ethos found in both the Old and New Testaments. Love your neighbor. Bold egg. Sprinkled among the formerly homeless are people like Neil and Lynn Nolan, who chose to leave their affluent Austin neighborhood and instead live here, as the Bible says, among the least of these. You two have been out there almost a year now. What's the most important thing you've learned? It's easy to say I'm going to meet people on their level, but it's another thing to actually live it and do it on a daily basis. It's evangelism minus the sermons. It's faith with works. What we want people to do is preach the gospel often and only when necessary use words. <laughs> no proselytizing allowed. That's why most of our neighbors love Christ but can't stand Christians. In the village, there's an art studio and work opportunities. A hydroponic garden supplies free fresh produce. But utopia, this is not. The two essential human needs are the need to be fully and wholly loved and fully and wholly known. When you bring all that uh, to the table, it creates an environment of uh, welcoming. But Harry, it has a side salad of tension. It's life. It's real life. With all the beauty and the marinade of the dysfunction all put into that one little tasty gumbo, man. JR figures he may have been on the street for 20 years, but no more. And you'll never find another place that cares about people like this. If this place didn't exist, would you still be on the street? If this place would, <laughs> didn't exist, I'd be dead. That's just the truth. We sat with JR on his porch, listening to him play the blues, mournful notes that belied a hymn of gratitude. For Sunday Today, Harry Smith, Austin. Now we turn to another innovative organization providing housing to the transgender population in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's see how My Sister's House is changing lives. It's a city known for its barbecue and blues, but just minutes from the hustle and bustle of Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee is also home to a vibrant yet vulnerable transgender community that faces social and economic challenges. We're in the Bible Belt of the South, and it's a, it's a red state in terms of housing access and discrimination, employment access and discrimination. There's no real legal protections for trans people. Nationally, one in five trans individuals is said to have experienced homelessness at some point in their life, and nearly a third live in poverty. Those figures are even higher when you account for race. I was born and raised here in Memphis, Tennessee. When Kayla Gore was just 23 and newly transitioning, she experienced homelessness while living 1,500 miles from the city where she grew up. It was very, very scary. After returning to Memphis, she entered a transitional housing program and began working without Memphis, the local LGBTQ community center. During that time, Kayla says she started to see a lot of trans and queer people kicked out of their homes at the age of 18, some rejected by their families. Well, there are services for individuals experiencing home insecurity in Memphis. Many are faith-based. There's lots of anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, and more importantly, a lot of those shelters are separated by sex assigned at birth. You're forced into a situation of either outing yourself or staying closeted in an environment where you could be incredibly unsafe. There's also a lot of trans folks of color here, so then you also kind of double down with racism. They have a lot stacked up against them. The pandemic exacerbated that. A survey by the Trevor Project found last year more than 80% of trans and non-binary youth said COVID-19 led to a more stressful living situation. Hoping to change that, Kayla, who'd been able to purchase her own home, which she shared with others who found themselves experiencing homelessness, founded My Sister's House. 
we wanted to provide like a space where people can thrive and they can actually start to grow um, and heal the trauma that they had, you know, experienced in their youth. Originally a word-of-mouth program, My Sister's House aimed to provide emergency services and shelter to trans and queer people of color. It's for us by us. Like, it's trans people at the helm of it, and it's from a perspective of someone who's been there. I was homeless as a youth, so I, I remember what it was like being vulnerable. As My Sister's House evolved, so did their mission. Now the group is aiming to build 20 homes for trans women in Memphis. It's safe to say that I did not come from a background of building houses or working with plumbing and electrical, uh, but it is safe to say that I came from a family that had really love and compassion for the community that they live in. Originally planning to build tiny homes, they're now <laughs> renovating existing homes because of the rising costs of everything, including lumber. Using a lottery of individuals they've previously helped, recipients get more than a shelter, they actually own the house. It's a different feeling when you um, have your own place. Jeanette Adams moved into her home just a few months ago. It's a tiny house, but it, you know, it's big to me. Jeanette had been living with her mom and has a supportive family, but being able to live on her own has boosted her confidence. I felt free. A lot of people, especially trans women, we don't get a chance to own anything. Kayla says that's exactly what she's hoping to provide those selected to receive a house. Trans people are boxed out of economics in so many different ways that we have to build our own economics. This is how people built generational wealth 100 years ago where their families had small homes. So it's nothing new that we're doing. It's just that we're doing a unique thing for a community that really deserves it. Just a couple miles from Jeanette's home, crews are replacing the electrical system at another property. This will be our fifth house that will be occupied. Modie James will soon call this two-bedroom home her own sanctuary. I'm ecstatic about it because it would be mine. It's my, it would be my home, not my house. Modie says she does not feel safe in her current living arrangement. I've been trying to get a home on my own. They take you through the ringer and they expensive. I see nothing and I live nothing but poverty. I'm trying to overcome it. LGBTQ advocates in Memphis say my sister's house is giving people more than a place to live. It also created visibility and hope and inspiration for the trans community and for trans people of color here in the South that just wasn't there before. If I had the opportunity to receive the resources that we provide today, I couldn't imagine what my life would be like. Kayla hopes to expand and replicate what my sister's house has done in other cities. And she also hopes the program has something of an expiration date. I would want the legacy of my sister's house to be that we came, we conquered, and we disappeared because we no longer were needed. We're back on the boost. For two years, Vernon Jackson has been giving free haircuts to kids with special needs. But it was his bond with one of those clients that led to the duo becoming a social media sensation. Take a look. The slang term for a haircut is getting your ears lowered. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. But this one will get your spirits raised. Hey, go. 
That's seven-year-old Ellison Eubanks laughing in the barber chair, a sight his mom, Julie, never thought she'd see. You see, for Ellison, who has Down syndrome, haircuts were once on par with root canals. They were sensory overload. I felt like we would leave every appointment kind of, you know, traumatized and he would have even more of a negative view of a haircut than he did before. Then they met Vernon Jackson. You're doing an awesome job, man. I'm so proud of you. Who just seemed to have the right touch. It's something about Vernon's energy is really cool. Ellison just gravitated towards him right away and he treated him like a human being, like any other client. A couple years ago, Vernon created the Gifted event, using money donated by the community. He gives free haircuts to kids with special needs, to those who may otherwise feel marginalized. I'm someone like, no, I see you, and I want to address you as you may have seen. I'm here with you through the process. During his second haircut with Vernon in January, Ellison, who's known as a bit of a class clown, suddenly decided to play a game. Of stop and go. and go, bringing sheer joy. And go. Go. Video of this moment has been watched on TikTok more than three million times. The people that are viewing this video are being healed from their perspective and their stigma and having a little more patience with the children. A valuable <laughs> lesson that, thanks to Vernon and Ellison, and is getting the green light. Did you say go? Yeah. It's like their BFF now, you know, like he loves going there. He walks in and he gives him a hug and he knows to sit in the chair and he knows that it's a safe place. Hey, we finish. <laughs> and now to a place where you can get a fresh cut and a chance to alter your future. Meet the man who created a barber shop experience that is changing lives. Barbara is your marriage counselor, your job therapist, your employment counselor, everything. You got to take it back just a little bit. Charnay Fair is a cut above the rest. He's the founder and executive director of the Westchester Barber Academy in Mount Vernon, New York, a place built on much more than just hair. For folks who have not been to a black barber shop, how would you describe it to a stranger? It's a little bit of everything. It's the only place where you can have an elected official, a pastor, and a street pharmacist all in a room and everybody gets along. Chardonnay grew up the youngest of seven. His parents divorced when he was just three. So my father on the weekends for the next five years, then he passed away of HIV. Four years after that, when I'm 12, my oldest brother passed away of HIV. So you take the breadwinners away from the family, you can only imagine what the next couple of years looks like. We lived in the projects for a little bit. We got evicted twice. Sometimes lights be cut out for weeks at a time. So you learn those survival skills. How did you get into barber? How did you discover the craft? My older brother used to cut my hair before he went away to college, and he left a pair of clippers behind. I was in a shelter with my family, and I cut my hair. This lady saw me. She's like, where's there the place to get a haircut around here? And I was like, I did it myself. She was like, hello. I have four boys upstairs. They all need haircuts. And it was just weird. I developed this following in the shelter. Charnay got a job at a nearby barber shop and within six months was working on customers himself. He even continued the trade while he was in college. I literally cleaned up, charging $6 per head. Some of my professors were coming into my dorm bathroom on a Saturday to get a haircut. After graduation, Charnay opened a barber shop and worked there for five years before he decided to switch gears and work as a director at a local charter school. I used to be the guy that was snatching lunch breaks. Like, you said, what the who? Grab your lunch, you're not eating with your friends, you're eating with me. First couple of minutes, it's a staring contest, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, it's like, all right, Mr. Fair, what would you have done in my situation? So I started an after-school barbering program and I taught kids in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade how to cut hair. In 2016, Charnay officially opened the Westchester Barber Academy, a hybrid barber shop and barber school where students learn the art through practice and partnerships. It's my way of personally giving back because, yeah. you know, I've been in those shoes and I wanted to really become the person that I needed when I was growing up. The school has contracts with organizations like Rikers Island, providing haircuts for inmates, 
and giving free services to folks experiencing homelessness in shelters. I want to go back to the mentorship aspect that, yeah. you, that you mentioned. Talk to me about that part of, of what you do. I come from both worlds. I'm able to say, hey, you know what? Guys on the corner, what you're doing right now, there's a legal way to do this. So I realized that a lot of folks had transferable skills, especially in the hood. If you change your hustle, you can be a, a successful businessman. The Academy has a 100% success rate for everyone they train for the Master Barber exam. They've even opened a cosmetology arm this past year. How rewarding has all of this been for you to sort of sit back and take stock of, of what you've created? I'm seeing students graduated from two classes ago, now coming back to mentor other students. And yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. Before we said goodbye, Sharnae and I got the royal treatment from two all-star students, Brandon and Rich. Say what hasn't come back, thankfully, the Jerry Curl. <laughs> Remember the Jerry Curl? Rich, what, what's, what makes this place so special? It's a place where young men can come yeah. to not just receive a haircut, but be around other men who are doing something that's positive. Yeah. And it's like a family environment, and they can learn. You should hire him. <laughs> <laughs> Get one of these for the house. Thank you. Sure appreciate nice. you, man. I appreciate yes, all you're doing. Looking good. Thank you. Appreciate all you're doing. Yes, sir. Coming. Thank you. They say hairdressers and barbers are unofficial therapists. Once you sit in that chair, it just all comes pouring out. Well, we want to introduce you to the barber who started a mental health movement where customers are getting a lot more than just a haircut. Take a look. Barbershops are an institution in the African-American community and known for a social change agent far as back as the civil rights era. And so we know that barbershops can really be the riveting component it really helping communities to thrive. The impact barbers can have on their clients is something Lorenzo Lewis has been familiar with throughout his life. As a kid, I was away from my mother and father, you know, due to just their inability to really parent. And so struggling from those issues internally and emotionally, you know, led me to anxiety and behavior issues in the classroom and mistrust issues with authority. And it led me to becoming a part of a gang. And a lot of the, the other challenges were in regards of um, how I felt about myself. Like so many young men, Lorenzo leaned on his barber for support. I grew up in my aunt's beauty salon um, here in Little Rock, Arkansas. There was a, a male barber there that, you know, I, I looked at him 
as a father figure, someone who was just strong and someone who, who was wise. What I was able to gain with him in the shop was really just a powerful experience. Recognizing the trust between barbers and their clients paired with the need for mental health advocacy, Lorenzo formed the Confess Project, a national mental health awareness movement that trains barbers to be mental health advocates. You know, right now in the black community, we are in a mental health crisis. And so when you think about the relationship between a barber and a client, this is the only time that two men will stand in the most close proximity for over 30 to 45 minutes at a time. That connection and the vibration that comes from that is a very powerful experience. Carlin Brown is one of 1,600 barbers across 47 cities, trained in active listening, validation, positive communication, and stigma reduction. A lot of barbers come from troubled backgrounds, you know, and so we can relate to a lot of people that's having trouble. Everybody doesn't have a great day every day, and uh, sometimes a client may come in disgruntled okay. about certain issues, uh, whether it's home, whether it's finances, and uh, you know, we try to talk to them about different ways, try to make that day better. Archie Kern Jr. is Carlin's client turned friend. It's very important to, to be able to walk into the barber shop and then just get to lay it all out. Growing up, it was just like a thing, like men don't supposed to show emotions, you don't supposed to cry. So it's just like you always have to have this motion that you're tough. All those things leads up to failures. I can walk in here knowing that whatever I share with him is safe and uh, knowing that if he was to tell someone else, it would be someone else that could possibly help me with my situation. I believe that when we prioritize mental health, communities will be safer and that people will be in the best possible stratosphere of what they deserve and will help to bolster better opportunities um, for communities to be stronger overall. Now to a barbershop visit that is inspiring a love of reading in kids all across the country. I am a reader. We want to put children in the driver's seat of their reading journeys and to let them know that they have a say and that it matters. I'm Alvin Irby, founder and chief reading inspirer at Barbershop Books. Still helping the babies read. I taught first grade in the Bronx and there was a barbershop across the street from my school. One day I'm getting a haircut and one of my first grade students walks into the barbershop. He starts getting antsy. All I kept thinking was, oh, I wish I had a children's book to give him because he should really be practicing his reading right now. That's when inspiration struck. So in November 2013, Alvin started bringing books into barbershops. Barbershop Books is a national literacy organization that inspires kids to read for fun and to identify as readers. That's what the barbershop's about. This is a place where we all come together, we all connect. Harlem Masters Barbershop in New York City, owned by Polo Green, is just one of more than 200 shops in the U.S. taking part in the program. It gives them an opportunity to, to look at books in a new way, a new way of exploring. It opens up your mind to places that you've never been before. 14-year-old Jordan Turner knows the impact firsthand. He has been coming to Harlem Masters for the past eight years. When I would wait to get my hair cut, I'll pick up the books and just read them. When people or kids are bored, they have something to read while they're just waiting. The imagination in different books, as when I grow older, the books become more complex. When you start young, it grows even more as they get older. Like the, the love for reading stays, it doesn't leave, no matter how old you are. And that's the mission of Barbershop Books, to empower countless young kids to read for fun. I like to read chapter books, nonfiction, and graphic novels. Like third grader Julian Wilder, who loves to read while getting a fresh new cut. Reading is, is life, and it's great to help with learning vocabulary. I think it allows them to think critically and just, you know, expand their imagination. Read before bed! And make me feel happy. The connections being built by barbershop books have lasting effects. It builds a, a relationship beyond hair. Recently, I got him a book for his birthday, and that's a bond that me and him could share. This is a stepping stone. <laughs> Having their minds open to different situations, different characters, different places that they may not be able to go to. Like us, right? Yeah. A 
across the country, Barbershop Books is creating a legacy of lifelong readers, one book and buzz at a time. Lots of children is, uh, identify with video games or they identify with sports, but children can equally identify with reading. Books provide a safe space for children to dream. We want children to say three words. I'm a reader. And with us now is the founder of Barbershop Books and the chief reading inspirer, <laughs> Alvin Irby. We like your title. We feel like it's <laughs> perfect and right on the nose. Thank you. I mean, you get to watch it in real time, how these books are affecting kids. How would you describe what it means to them? Uh, transformative. Yeah. I think that for a lot of um, black boys and other children, they tend to think of reading as this thing that you have to do at school mm -hmm. or for school. Um, but we collect book recommendations from boys and we buy those books. Yeah, oh, what they want. The books that the boys tell us they want to read, those are the books I'm that we sure ship. I'm sure there's lots of dog men. <laughs> oh, Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants. But that is the beauty of reading. Kids yeah. should be falling in love with books, not just assigned mm -hmm. whatever a teacher thinks they should mm -hmm. read. I, I agree 100%. You know, I think um, meeting you, it feels like you're living your life's mm -hmm. passion mm -hmm. in a way that maybe you didn't always think you would do. What has this organization and starting this meant to you? Um, I definitely feel like I am on a path that has been paved for a long time, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. My mom taught in the Little Rock School District wow. for more than 30 years. She retired there. And then, you know, when I was in college, I decided that, you know, being in education was what I wanted to do with my life. And I moved to New York City to become a teacher, not knowing mm -hmm. that eventually I would start a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, was it tough to start, by the way? Absolutely. You know, I think that, um, you know, um, it just, it takes a lot. Takes you know, you have to work. have a board. Yeah. You have to, you know, raise yeah. money every year, every yes. month, every yes. week um, to kind of keep things going. But the stories that I hear, yeah. the things that I see in the barbershops, even on, you know, the most stressful day, <laughs> yeah. you know, I have those memories of how, you know, barbershops are being transformed, yes. you know, um, by the work that we're doing. And Families are falling in love with reading. Um, and so, you know, those moments, I think, definitely, um, you know, mm. just continue to inspire me. back with a final mood boosting video sure to lift your spirits. Check it out. We are celebrating your small wins. A little leaguer sliding into home. He jumps up yes. and goes right <laughs> into <laughs> the gritty dance. He's not trying to show anybody up. He just run back to the bench with a little extra swagger. He's ready for the bigs. Let's go. Thank you so much for joining us for another day of uplifting stories here on The Boost. We will see you right back here tomorrow on Today All Day.
might recognize me. I'm John Cena, and I play Jacob Toretto in the Fast and Furious franchise. Ahead of the premiere of our film Fast 10 from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal, I'm taking over Popstar Plus. Now, I grew up watching the Fast movies, and it is crazy to think it's been more than 20 years since the release of the first film. What a ride it's been. Over the next half hour, I'm bringing you all things Fast and Furious. We'll highlight interviews with some of my awesome castmates, the stars of Fast 10. And we'll look back at an interview from the Today Show Vault with the late Paul Walker from 2001. First up, me, of course. I'm having so much fun hanging out here at Studio 1A. I sat down with my Today Show friends to talk about my return in Fast 10. Take a look. When you get to the advanced stage, all you do is add weight. Oh, like Al Roker. <laughs> So it means something like this. <laughs> it's very easy, and you don't have to get to a gym. Cena, really that was John Cena back in 2017, showing off his iconic WWE moves. And in addition to being a 16-time world champion, John is also an actor, a children's book author, even a platinum-certified rapper. And he's back on the big screen in Fast 10, the latest installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise. Take a look. You ready? Ready. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Okay, uh, song lyrics, stub toes, and cannon cars. <laughs> From Cena. squatting Al Roker on the Today Show to cool road trips with cannon cars. You know what? Okay, John, for one second, as I was reading that lead and I was reflecting on your life here, and we have watched you go from WWE to this rocket ship that's taken you into movies and books and all kinds of things. Do you, When you sit and sort of reflect back and go, I remember back then, what is it, what's that ride been like? Well, thank you for the kind words, but yeah. actually Today Show is not, you're not just a spectator, you're an integral part in, in all of this. I mean, I, uh, transforming from live performance to yeah. film takes a lot of nuance, and I learned a lot of it here on the Today Show with you guys. So remember you co-hosted with me? I remember, Do you remember? It all the time. We yeah. did a wedding, I officiated <laughs> yes, somehow. Yes, you yeah. did. You did Squatted it all. Squatted Al Roker. <laughs> we just saw that. Yeah, it's been a crazy ride, but well, you guys have been an instrumental part oh, of that, so well, it's always great to be back. A Fast 10 is something special, obviously. The last time you were on Fast and Furious, you were the newbie. You were joining this cast that had been in place for a long, long time, and you were a bad guy. Yes. So now, in Fast 10, you are no longer the bad guy, which I always thought you were miscast in any way. So Thank you. tell me about your new role in uh, this one. So I get to be a cool uncle. Uh, the family is in trouble with a bad guy who has no intentions of turning good in this time in Fast 10 with Jason Momoa. He steals the show in his role, and I get to be the cool uncle to take uh, Lil B, uh, little Brian Toretto, on a road trip to try to get him to safety. And action and adventure ensues. The weather's warming up, and it's gonna it's great weather for a summer box office, and Fast 10 is exactly that, just okay. a blockbuster. Okay, so wait, what about stunts and all that driving? What were you doing? Were you doing all of it, or some of so it? So the car is actually practical. They built, like, five cannon cars, and it can actually fire. It doesn't, like, fire uh, cannon rounds, yeah. but it was all practical. And there's there's some physical stuff in there, and I was I was very proud to be able to know that I still got it. So I was able to do you some some of my own still stuff. Still got it. You got it. Fasten your seatbelts because the newest blockbuster movie is speeding into theaters. That's right. John Cena returns to the iconic Fast and Furious franchise in its tenth installment, and the action just keeps on coming. Take a look. You okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Oh, oh wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, do you get real injuries when you do those fight scenes ever? No, it is so but much safer on. than WWE. Really? Man, Did you get real injuries in WWE? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm getting my feelings hurt on a daily basis. Yes. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's much safer and much more fun. You know what? We were talking. It's your career <coughs> has had such an evolution. Mm -hmm. It's like it seems like you're always learning and growing. Mm -hmm. And you could have stayed in WWE forever, but mm -hmm. you continued to evolve. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you just said off camera that I'm a guy who apparently does stuff. So I'm just trying to do stuff and see where it takes me. But sometimes when you have, and we've all been there, it's like you have a sure thing. Yeah. This is my 
my sure thing. WWE is your sure thing. You don't know what happens when you jump off the cliff. Yes. But you decided, why not? Well, uh, we spoke earlier in uh, the Today Show, and the, the information I picked up here is it was very pivotal in me being brave enough to try newer things. So yes, I did have a fluency and comfortability in WWE. Yeah. And then, like, I would do the Today Show with you yeah. and then fly to do Raw at night. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I would split atoms, but in learning to do that, I got more comfortable in this realm. Yeah, and yeah, getting yeah. more comfortable in front of people in closer cameras, I was able to be more comfortable in film. So it wasn't like, I'm doing this oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's been, like, 10 years of subtle practice like baby to, steps. and here we are yeah and that's i think evolution and mm -hmm. the other new role you newish because we just haven't seen mm -hmm. you in a bit is you're married oh i can thought we... you were gonna say i was a merman <laughs> Yeah. But can, can we just say congratulations? I will take congratulations all day long. Um, Thank you Tell us about her. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? We, uh, well, no, no. Um, I will tell you that we have uh, core values which we both believe in, mm. and uh, one of those is keeping our information to, to us. Yeah. And those, she, those yes. extremely close to our inner circle, so I really appreciate you asking. Yeah. And, Boy, do I take the congratulations because yeah. I couldn't be happier. That's amazing. But I think a way for us to keep our intimacy is by keeping it intimate. Yeah, that's, that's By the way, beautiful. that's really smart. And she's gorgeous. What a I gorgeous, agree. gorgeous couple. Man, you did. Did I luck out. You did. You did. Don't uh, tell you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the Fast and the Furious. Yes. So, um, I, last time you played in Fast and the Furious, you played a bad guy. The and evil that was brother you of were Don evil, Perino. and yes. it never really f hit right for me because we know yeah. you for real. But this time you get to use your comedy chops. Get to be cool, Uncle Jacob. Yeah, yeah. So it's tell a, us about Uncle Jacob. So first of all, the Fast and Furious, like no one ever dies. They bring back all the characters. No one's ever bad. They yeah. turn all the yeah. bad guys into good guys. So it's kind of like a rite of passage to get your own car. Got that. <laughs> to be a bad guy and be a good guy. Got that. And now I get to be like a cool uncle. Uh, Jacob Toretto is responsible for getting little B, little Brian Toretto, to safety while the rest of the family is in peril, held up by a, a wonderful performance by Jason Momoa. So the cast is stacked, it's a bunch of fun. Uh -huh. There's like, the family for the first time is fragmented, so yeah. it's like seven movies going on in one movie. It's a tremendously fun ride, it's got some great guest appearances, wow. stick oh. around for the whole thing. It's it's a really, ooh, really ooh, great ooh. movie to watch. Yeah, I'm like, can you tell well, us? We heard, we heard Rita Moreno, because we're having her yes. on our yeah, show, I think, tomorrow, yeah. or yes. whenever yeah. the next day. She's, yeah, she's amazing. Vin Diesel, Jason Statham, Rita Moreno, Helen Mirren. Oh, um, Helen Mirren. Yeah, uh, Charlize Theron. Oh my God. It's, it is, Jason Momoa, I mean, the list Come goes on. on. Brie Larson, it goes on and on. On. And, and there's some ones that I'm not, not allowed to say not, yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting started. There's still more to come. Don't miss the matriarch of the Toretto family, the lovely Rita Moreno. Up next. I'm John Cena taking over Popstar Plus for the premiere of Fast 10. Let's put this show into gear and head to our next interview with the latest addition of the Fast family, Rita Moreno. Rita joins us as Abuela Toretto. She told today how she got her role. I'm with a true icon, exploding Rita Moreno, first Latina, and one of the only 18 people ever 
to become an EGOT winner. That's an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. And even after seven decades in showbiz, she's far from slowing down. She's starring in Fast 10. That's the newest installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise. Along with an astonishing cast. Yeah, you're co well, hold on. Let's just take a look. Okay. I know that this road has been very hard and also not fair. And yet here you are. Despite all of the odds, building this magnificent lake. <laughs> <laughs> Those two are so funny. They are Is a vaudeville act. You love them, huh? Oh, I adore them. And yes, I'm, I'm a text buddy with, with Chris. You are? Uh -huh. like, so well, I asked him for his number before I left. I found him so intriguing. You know what the best thing is? You know, thing he's about... a very smart, articulate guy. I mean, the cool thing about you is you, keep, you fall in love. Yes. You meet people and fall in love. That's part of how you, you, you operate. How did you get this gig on Fast 10? I hear it was your grandson. Well, it pays to sleep with the right people. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I, we heard a rumor that your grandson, my grandson was okay. instrumental. Well, so he thinks. What happened is that <laughs> his name is Justin, and he's a good-looking kid. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that aside, um, he, they, he and Vin met at the West Side Story Vin premiere. Diesel, right. The new, the new West Side Story. Okay. And he collared Vin, and he said, you know, you really ought to use my grandma in your movie. I know that you like her. Yeah. And he said, she'd be great in your, in your movie. And Vin said, yes, yes, I, I know, I'm aware of that. Vin had already decided that he wanted me ah. in it. So, but Justin is convinced that he got me the gig. <laughs> so you gave him the credit, you just so let him think he, that. He, he goes around bragging to everybody, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I did I that. I, I did got, that for my grandmother. I got, I got my icon grandmother that that, uh, yeah, that yeah, role. Right. By the way, yesterday on our show, Martha Stewart was on, and mm -hmm. she is gracing the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition at 81. Wait She's a minute, in a bathing suit? In a bathing Get suit, girl. Out. In a bathing suit. So, so, tell Looks me. Looks gorgeous. Wow, yay. Did so, she work out for this cover like six months in she advance? She did. She said she did Pilates. But what? <laughs> isn't this the coolest? Like, I feel like there's something happening. Cool women who are, who are sort of unafraid to do all kinds of things. And I put you obviously in that category of... I not only do, I speak. You just say what you want to say. Yeah, it's fun. So it gets greater later. Is that the truth of oh, it? Oh, yeah. I get dirtier and dirtier <laughs> every year. You do? I get, oh, yes. You yes, I mean, I really don't give up. <laughs> what people think. Ah, and that's the fun. And actually, what's interesting is the younger people love that. Yes. Like when I talked about getting turned on, yeah. when I entered the, 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 uh, the locker room in, uh -huh. the, in the movie, oh, 80 yeah. for Brady. 80 for Brady. I literally, I mean, something happened to me that was weird. You know, I was then 89 <laughs> or something, not quite 90. And I just got into this room and I went, oh my God. <laughs> and I thought, what is wrong with you? You're 90. What is right with you? What, you filthy old woman. <laughs> what are you doing? But do you I, it's called pheromones. And I believe in that. I believe I was breathing in pheromones. But don't you think, I mean, you're free. You're, you, you have your voice. I mean, how long did it take you to find that voice? Oh, to be able to. You know, it re I really needed to get old. Yeah? I just did. That did the trick? Yeah, and it's suddenly, and I'm also mischievous. Yes. I have a very mischievous nature. So, uh, you know, this took a while. I was always cute and funny and all that kind of stuff. Now I don't give up. <laughs> you don't anymore. Notice, You're... I'm in this show, so I only say I don't give up. I know. Well, thank you for that, because we do have someone on a <laughs> seven-second delay I waiting know. for you. You're going to be in... I actually, when I'm on, I'm sure they're like this. <laughs> I know. So what, you're going to be on in Fast 11, too? Yeah. Ready in the next one? Yeah. She's already being cast in the next one? Yes. Rita. I am so excited. I'm playing his grandma. Again, yes. And But this time, it's going to be... I, I don't want to give anything away because he'll kill me. Ben. Okay. But uh, there's some really surprising stuff. Oh, well, we can't wait. Now, look, you are an EGOT winner. You've got, you know, the Emmy, the Tony, the Oscar, and the Emmy. Mm -hmm. And we decided we are going to give you something that you don't have. We're calling it the TGOT. It's the Today Icon Award. We do not give this away it's ever. First ever. 
Oh, and so, and look who's giving Craig it to me. Craig Melvin is bringing you Hello, your, 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 Hello, your, your, Congratulations. Sit down, you animal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And congrats. Th is that something? I'm intrigued here. <laughs> here she. Is. Uh oh, it's kid goodbye. <laughs> Hi there, cutie. <laughs> I've, I've been such a fan for so long. Really? Oh gosh, yes. How long? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm in my early forties, so. And I'm in my early nineties. Well, you know, if, if I weren't married. <laughs> Do we give a hoot? <laughs> We should go to commercial, huh? You see what Rita's doing? Rita says that she's at this stage of life oh, where I can tell. she don't care. Give up. Rita, we love you to the moon and back. It's yes. great to be loved. Thank you. All right, be sure to catch her on Fast 10 <laughs> from our sister company, Universal. It's in theaters on Friday. I'm having so much fun. Are you? Hey, after the break, we're digging in the Today Show vault with some interviews with the late Paul Walker and my brother, Vin Diesel. Don't miss it. watching our Fast 10 special right here on Popstar Plus. Can you believe it's been 22 years since the release of the first ever Fast and Furious film in 2001? It was the beginning of an era. And two of its stars, Paul Walker and Vin Diesel, received major praise for their breakout roles in the film. Back in 2001, they stopped by the Today Show to talk about the film's success. Go! Fast and the Furious is an adrenaline-driven drama about the illegal drag racing scene. Paul Walker is an undercover cop who is investigating a notorious street racer with ties to big rig hijackings, played by Vin Diesel. Ask any racer, any real racer. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. What is it with men and cars? To me, that's just America. It's always been that way. Guys in their cars, they take pride in it. It's what they take their dates out in. That's what makes them one of the guys. And uh, I think He's that's right. where. I grew up in New York, so I know about subways. This film is about something that is so popular, yet many people are not aware of street racing subculture. What exactly is that? Well, it's a phenomenon. It's a very strong subculture. They're racers that are so dedicated that had their life gone a different way or something, they could have been professional Formula One drivers. They spend every dime that they have on trying to enhance their car. And their spare time is, is dedicated to, like, practicing the art of racing. Right. I was really amazed uh, when we really started tackling this and we got underway. 
to see just how big this whole import car scene had really gotten. And uh, it's everywhere. It's Detroit, it's Phoenix, it's New York. It's, it's everywhere. There's thousands of young people all over that get involved in this subculture, right? Right. I was first exposed to it in, in high school. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And uh, Wednesday nights, that was the thing to do. It's basically just as it was depicted in the movie. You'd run out to the races, the cops would come, we'd swarm and hopefully not get caught. <laughs> How much of the driving did you guys actually do? It won't kill your macho image, right. don't worry. We did some of our own stunts. And we felt good about I bet you did. doing some of our own stunts. But it, it, every time we started to feel really good, like we were contributing, the stunt performers would do something impossible. We never took a, a, a charger and did a 360 degree somersault over another car. Because you probably wouldn't be here to talk about it. I've been telling everybody that was me. <laughs> Getting to my next question, right. hope I don't cause a little rift here. Who's the better driver? Naya. <laughs> if you don't mind saying so. No, I, that's I, an I, easy one. Yeah. I mean, I, I, grew, I, grew, I grew up, up with East subways. Coast. Yeah. I mean, I can hop a turnstile. I could, you know, I know what a token <laughs> looks like. Um, but, but that's me. I, you know, I didn't. When you grow up in Manhattan, you're really not exposed to cars that much. Right. Get the kid back up there. Thirty-three-year-old Diesel, best known for his roles in Saving Private Ryan and Boiler Room. And Walker, 27, previously seen in such teen hits as Varsity Blues, and She's All That, are still relatively unknown. We drive like you've done this before. We no, never. But they're hoping this film could change all that. You're both not quite household names yet. This film could do it for you. You're kind of sitting on the cusp here. Which is a nice place to be. Yeah, I would say. Nice place to be. Check out this next interview in our Fast 10 special here on Popstar Plus. What are you smiling about? Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> you almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. <laughs> Granny shifting, not double clutching like you should. You're lucky that 100 shot of Nas didn't blow the welds on the intake. Almost had me. Vin Diesel, good morning. It's nice to see you. Good morning. How you been? Very, very, very good. You busy? You. Yes, I, I've been busy. And before I forget, I want to thank you. The last time I, I came on to your show, I We forgot. talked about Pitch Black. We talked about Pitch and Black. Also and also Boiler, Boiler Room. Room. And prior to coming on the show, you, you had given me this wonderfully kind compliment. And I guess... I was too nervous to, to <laughs> thank you back then. Well, you so. are, I don't remember it at all, but you are most welcome. Okay, I think that wraps up our interview. I'm done. <laughs> it's so nice to have you back. Let's first talk about Fast and the Furious. Did you want to play the role of Dominic? Was that something that you felt was sort of close to your heart? This is a guy who's mm -hmm. obviously, you know, driving 170 miles down the L.A. streets. Kind of a rough character, but also a guy with a heart. What do you like about him? Well... Obviously, uh, I'm attracted to roles like that because we see, you know, there's a pattern. I'm attracted to anti-heroes of some sort or another. Because they're the bad guy, and yet you spend the whole movie rooting for them to win. But yeah. then you're like, they're the bad guy. Well, what's interesting about the dominant character is he is the same person when you are introduced to him as he is in the end of the film. He's a guy with his own moral complexities, but uh, lives outside of the law. And the, what was attractive to me about um, the character is his relationships with each person, each other cast member in the film is so different from one another. And that was attractive, but what really, the reason why I did the film, you know, I was never a real car guy. Um, I grew up in New York City. Right, who has a car when you grow up in New York City? I, I was able to take a subway without a token. <laughs> but I wasn't necessarily... <laughs> Not uh, illegal street car racing, but illegal yeah, subway hopping. Subway. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and, and then, of course, when I was in college, I, you know, I had a motorcycle and I would do retarded things like go 155 miles an hour on the Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, or not not good, not safe. Yeah, so very, you, very, this is sort of living your... 
the use you never had driving a car because in the movie they're going 170 miles an hour this the stunts are pretty amazing did they send you are, um, off to like driving school we did do driving school um we did it in vegas <laughs> Not the smartest place. <laughs> right. Um, party all night. Party get in the all car, night. driving school all night. 6 a.m. You're <laughs> driving school. You're still thinking about the money you lost. <laughs> playing craps at 5.30 in the morning. Um, and then we, in Dodger Stadium, we learned how to do, we did some stunt driving. And that was really probably the most fun to me. And a lot of folks are saying that you're going to be the next big action star because the action stars with Sylvester Stallone, blah, 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 they're all getting kind of old. And you're the next generation. Do you like that? Is that a compliment? What do you think? Well, I would imagine, you have but you such also good insight. have, you, I would imagine you could that probably you would love answer it, that, like, but cause you I know could me. see you getting trapped in those kind of roles. Very, very true. So what do you want to do then? You know, I've been acting for so long and I never got any roles. And it took me, uh, you know, so many years, I ultimately had to start writing screenplays and directing. Start, put yourself in a Yeah, I had, to, <laughs> I had to That do, works. You gotta do what you gotta do. that's what got you your big break. So you're basically saying you wanna do everything. Write, direct, produce, star in a variety of roles, and just be. I wanna star in a variety of roles. I wanna write and direct. I, I wanna direct, you know, because that's what I think is the most challenging. And I wanna be able to tell stories later. Wow, what icons. The great Paul Walker is dearly missed by us and his fans. We've got even more fun for you here on our Fast 10 special on Popstart Plus. One thing about these movies, going on number six now. We're all just along for the ride now. They keep coming up with driving scenarios you might not even begin to dream of. Car versus car versus truck versus boat. Through tunnels, flying over bridges. I didn't know there were any rules. Tough guy versus tough guy. Guy versus guy versus window. Even the ladies are tough. I love it all. Does your character evolve? Yeah, my character definitely evolves in this one. You'll have to wait and see. Oh, and monster truck versus speeding train versus fire versus cliff. Somehow these guys survive. But as mystifying to them, is how they are still doing this. It was a big explosion. Many thought I had died. Um, but I rose from the ashes like the oh, phoenix. Oh, my goodness. I'm kicking all the bad guys' <laughs> That's all <Yeah>. I need. <laughs> so what keeps people coming back, buying the video games, wanting more? Yeah. To be a part of something that spanned this kind of time, it feels, it feels really good. More than the tight engines, and clothing. I want you to help me. The plots are clever. That line between good guy and bad guy is very fine and keeps changing. We're the good criminals. We're like the oh, Robin Hood. Of course, good you're yes. the good criminals. Yes. yes. With themes of loyalty, family, and integrity. Fast Five, in my opinion, just completely reinvigorated the entire thing. I think we're going to top it. Bingo. 
been an absolute honor to join the Fast and Furious family. And I cannot wait for you all to see what we get into in Fast 10. It's in theaters now. Hey, thanks for hanging here with me. friends over for Christmas cocktails, you'll need some delicious finger foods. Wow. So we called up one of our favorite fellowships with the most is Elizabeth, Elizabeth High School. School. She's going to show us three easy appetizers that are yes. always a hit with every but, party. But did, I don't want to say what you just called me. It was fun. Everybody but, heard. But wait, Everybody here's the heard. thing. We have a challenge for you guys real quick before we start this cooking segment. Elizabeth High School is on Instagram. Yes. Yes. What, what's your handle? So it's Elizabeth High School of Official. Official. Okay. She only has how many? No, and that's a lot. No, that was she me. She said only. 15,000. No, that's, that's a lot. lot. Well, well, can we just see by the end of this segment? <laughs> let's let's see, see how many followers Yo, Elizabeth High follow School because official. She I mean, look at how like cute this. that is. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Rosemary, we're ready. Now, this is, okay, we're ready. It's, it's ready. adorable. So, my <laughs> cute friend, Julio, she has a holiday party for the girls. It's called Joy to the Girls. And I, oh, you know me right now with Joy. It's all about yes. what I'm working with. So, um, anyway, so it's super easy hors okay. d'oeuvres. Lots of fun. We're going to start. With that's a Christmas a, way, margarita. A, a Christmas a margarita. Christmas did you margarita. make this just for us? I Thank did. You. Well, you know, we we know you love margaritas. Yes, I do. And so all we did was rosemary, stick a little cranberry in there, yeah. and that's a fun garnish. And what's, what kind of margarita is it? So it's um, cranberry juice, orange juice, lime juice, and some tequila, mm -hmm. honey. The only we love the, the cranberry, which makes it look I, little Isn't that good? good? By yeah. I love that. So listen, Let me put that then down. we have these stuffed mushrooms, which I adore okay. because they're simple. Uh -huh. um, these are cremini's. You could use a button mushroom. Pull out the center. Yeah. And then we're going to go. Oh, these are some other ones that we just chopped up. Okay. We're going to put them in our pan and do a little saute. Okay. We've got some onions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also have some red peppers. Mm -hmm. Cream cheese. Yes, queen. Ooh, yeah. I mean, come on. That. And then sausage. And what about I mean, this? that hits all what, the food groups, doesn't it? Uh -huh. I mean, pretty much. What's in here? Oh, and that's Worcester, so let's add that too. What'd you say, Worcester? Worcester. You call it Worcester. A Worcester. I and like so, it. Worcester. <laughs> that's what it should be called. It should be no Worcester. Have you ever sure. Worcester. had cream cheese with with jelly on top and pepper oh, jelly? Yeah. Pepper, pepper jelly. jelly. And that's it. That's I, the best. I, I, that's the last time, else. the last time I did it, I ate a whole block. I cannot even talk about it. It was, it was <laughs> terrible. Okay, so now we'll stuff them, and then the great thing is, you can make these ahead. You can also take these little jokers and freeze them. Do you cook these, or you uh -huh. just leave it like yeah, that? Yeah. So once they stuff, then they're going to go what into the that? oven, Crazy. and then we're going to cook them for mm. I know for 350, uh, 350 for about five to ten minutes. I have to say, okay? without the cream cheese, that would be a flop. Oh, you, know, you have cheese. to have the cream cheese, mm, yeah. right? And then it also makes a great dip. You could just serve that with tortilla chips too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now pecans. Oh, we're still here. We love our pecans. These. This is one of my favorite gifts to give. Oh, you yeah. know, just as a little holiday thing. Yeah, what do you do? These have been soaking in maple sugar mm. and uh, maple syrup and and water. And, now we're and then I have salt, cayenne, and um, paprika. Mix it up. Sheet pan. Three hundred and fifty oh. degrees. Bacon? Yes, bake them. Set a timer, people. Why? You're Don't always you're them. gonna burn them. You're gonna burn them, and they're expensive. Yeah. Nuts are expensive, y'all. Okay, now they are. Now nuts are expensive, but the best what? holiday dish, what in my opinion, is a brie cheese. You said we're bringing it back. <laughs> okay. It didn't go anywhere. So going. it never went anywhere for you. So what so are you doing right now? So this is funny. So I'm taking off the top of this brie because, honey, we're gonna stuff it, when, and then what? we're gonna wrap it. And it is going to be divine. And You're going to stuff it yes. and wrap it. So we it? pull it off. Okay. Now, then what we're going to do is we're going to add that honey. And it's a praline brie because I we love. know New Orleans is your yes. part. Wait, what should I do? Yeah. Drizzle it. Drizzle it. And then we're going to take those spiced pecans. And you could use any nut. Yes, you could do Stick walnuts. Uh -huh. Could you use it? And they don't even have to be spiced. They could just be toasted. Stick now add top. that. Uh huh. Okay. And now then let's get our brown sugar. And you're just going to kind of pack it on top. Oh, put it all in there? Yeah. Okay, and, and then, then and then just kind of press it. Now watch. So what, then we're coming over you, here. And your phyllo. And then we're just. This is puff pastry. Oh, puff pastry. So do you see how easy? And don't get nervous. You know there were always things because I wasn't like classically trained. Trained. Shocker. You're just good. Um, and so there were things like puff pastry that I would go. Well, I can't do puff pastry. That's how it. How do you buy it in a box? <laughs> and then. <laughs> then what you And doing? then you all you do is just wash. yeah a little egg wash and that's going to give us that gorgeous oh, color. My You're going to put this into Wait. an oven. 
350 degrees. How many minutes? This is my favorite. You know, oh, just you. till it's brown and <laughs> runny and gooey and fabulous, honey. Now, can I ask a question? People are not going to leave yes, this. Can, can I ask be, you something? Yes, yes, For some reason, whenever I do this, the top burns. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, did you pre, number one, preheat your oven. Okay. Okay? Put it in the middle of the oven. Okay. If it mm -hmm. starts to get dark, don't panic. Just cover it with foil oh and keep cooking it. Foil. Okay? Foil. Foil. Um, <laughs> okay, so how many did you have before? How many followers? Oh, no. We're almost oh, at 16,000. We're going to get we? more. 16,000? Almost. We're going to keep it going, So we got 500. We go can keep to, going. No, no, we got 800. Let's keep it. Oh, we got 800. Okay, okay. that's Listen, awesome. Listen, it's what Elizabeth High School Official. official. Elizabeth High School Official. You guys, she has the best recipes. She's best. hilarious. <laughs> She's such a Let's fun go. Ball. All right, to get these recipes, head to today.com slash food. <laughs> All right, this morning on Today Food, we are answering the age-old summer party question, what can I bring? Well, today <laughs> contributor Elizabeth High School has two delicious summer salad recipes, and no pressure, Elizabeth, but there are three Yankees eating your food. We need them to be in good health. I hope this is they're good cute. and tasty. They're cute. They're uh, cute. They're cute. <laughs> Honey, they want ribs. Though. I don't know if they like, want this. You're here on salad day. Sorry. <laughs> we told them to stay away from the drinks, though. Yeah. 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 No. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, She's got a heavy pour. Absolutely. So, I mean, y'all know it's hot as the hinges of hell. Yeah. in the south yeah. right now and nobody wants to be sweating in the kitchen so we're going to do these great easy salads that we can pull together quickly okay, okay. Um, all right so now i'm going to get salad. you yes it's i've a never shaved a vegetable salad. i don't i still but, don't like you with knives no 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 no, 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 no she is wonderful no. Are you all right sure so here we go take off the ends mm -hmm. here very don't good so snappy and then it. we're oh, going to shave it just like this oh okay careful not look at you okay buddy okay buddy you got it yeah okay keep going so now we go in here now Wait, with our fennel, like it. It. you're making, and then with our fennel. Oh God! I, I had like such high it. hopes. All right, let's move on over. <laughs> let's move to the fennel. Is then. Okay, the you fennel? move to okay. the fennel. Yes. All right. Now, if you, you don't love do fennel, this. oh, you're better at that. Okay. If you don't love fennel, you can always use celery. Mm -hmm. That's a great, um, a great option. We're gonna put that in there, and then we're gonna start making our dressing. You're moving so fast for us. Okay, yes, keep going. All right, we're so we've got a little bit of honey. We've got some Dijon. We also have got some lemon juice. Okay. And then we're gonna slowly drizzle the oil. Yeah. In here, oh, oh. Oh. I, knew, I was waiting. I was waiting. Yankees oh, love. like pause, it. Pause for Yankees reaction. Okay, what are y'all doing? How do you? What do you think? Delicious. Um, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, really, y'all forget. Feels like it. summer. Listen, we need to drink. Yeah. Like, that's not fair. They're drinking, and I want to drink. I know, yeah. but they got a game. When's the so, next game? So these tonight. Are, tonight. Tonight. Oh, no, 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 no. They're gonna be mad. I'm gonna be the reason. They get You're no. They got drunk, work drunk work on the Today Show. <laughs> Please <laughs> win, or we're gonna have angry Yankees fans. These are virgins. No, I okay, don't know. Okay, you got Okay. So we're now virgin. we're going to, oh my um, God, that is it, raw. It, it is a peach and Aperol margarita. You know we love a we margarita. Love. Okay, this is beautiful. Now it what do is. we do? So now what we do is we're going to add pine nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we're adding pine nuts. We're adding parmesan. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. We're going to add that vinaigrette that I just made. Yeah. Let's get uh -huh. the vinaigrette right, in there. Yep, the Dump it in. Mm -hmm. Yes, And the fennel too, the whole and, thing. And then, yes, okay, and then I want you to, yes, watch me toss. And then you're going to toss. 
What about these? They're all right, now this salad is one of my favorite things. It's everything Wait, from are the we all done? market. Yeah, that's this. Well, yeah, that's we it. It's just super easy salad. We'll just move salad. on. We don't have time for all that. So. <laughs> We got to keep it clean. All right, so here we are. This is farmer's market really? salad. The deal is, uh -huh. if it grows together, right. it goes together. Oh, okay? Oh, what does so that mean? we have, <laughs> well, because corn, peaches. Oh, 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 oh okay, got it. Got if it, it, if you see it at a farmer's market, it's all going to go together. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter. You can put anything you love in there. Okay. okay. Now, this is so my favorite what? trick. So Wait, when look what you've she's got. Doing. You've got all these little tomatoes. Yes, okay. oh, I want to see this. So we're going to put this on top, oh, and then you just cut yeah. straight through it. That's Isn't a good that fun? Yes. Come on, I'm gonna, yeah, that's, that's a life good. hack. That's, that's a, a hack, right? So then that's we're going to add this in. That's a life hack. And then I've got smoked chicken. Now listen, you can just go to your local barbecue stand, pick up some smoked just chicken, yep. stick it in. Or I mean, you can you can smoke your own. Um, okay. I think that's legal in y'all's state it now. Is. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought not in Mississippi. All right. So let's mark on our vinaigrette. Okay. No, yeah, not in Mississippi. Okay, not yet. Not ever, probably. Mm. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and add some lemon juice to this. Lemon juice. And then we've got balsamic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to throw in two cloves of garlic. Mm, just whole good. like that? Uh huh. Okay. Because we're going to blend it. Okay. And then Zesting. a little bit of zest, mm -hmm. which we love a zest. Yes. And what's that? And the Parmesan's going to go in. The whole in. thing? It's a Parmesan wow. vinaigrette. What's the drink, Elizabeth? Yeah, the we're drink gonna... is a peach and Aperol margarita. Oh, yes. That's fantastic. I mean, is it not one of the best things you've ever put in your that mouth? so good. Yankees like it? We're out of time. Uh, like we are Italy. out of time. Like in Italy? Enjoy it. It's delicious. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, Amazing. Thank you. thank you very much. All right, I'm going to well, need this recipe. They're all fueled, they're fueled yeah. up and liquored up for the game tonight. Liquored up for the game. Yeah. Thanks, Elizabeth. You'd have it no other <laughs> way. If you want to get your hands on these recipes, go to today.com slash food. We've got Elizabeth High School here, and you guys are cooking up skirt steaks and mm. roasted yes. vegetables. But okay. I've never been on this side of you during a cooking segment. <laughs> well, believe me, I've never been on this side of a cooking segment. <laughs> but we are making skirt steak, and Elizabeth's going to help me. But we we made this on the, the first episode. Yeah. Yes, show yes, yes, yes. Roll yes. It's, it's easy if I can do it. But why did you want to have a cooking show? Oh, well, I mean, I didn't. I wanted to learn to cook. You guys know, like, in yeah. the 10 years I've been on this show, they've been trying for 10 years to teach me how. Mm -hmm. And my, I was like, I never learn because what they do is they set it all we up. We do it all. And, and then I'm like, it all the they're like, dump True. it, dump it, and oh, it's presto done. I'm like, that, I, ha I don't know how to cut. Yeah. Right. I don't know how to grill cheese. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. how to do it. So I was like, okay, let's do it, but we got to. And, and every thing. time I would try to take over, she would say, no, no let I had to cut me. it. I let me. Now, have you actually gone out on your own and tried yes, this at I home? Yes, I committed for myself to make every single thing, and I've done almost all the recipes. You made a done. Valentine's yes. Day dinner I for did. Mike. I made I'm a inspired. Inspired. for Mike with roasted vegetables. I'm inspired. Oh, let's get to the roasted vegetables. vegetables. I can. I can dream. There's a whole awesome breakfast episode that's coming up in a couple weeks where it's like homemade pancakes that are easy and delicious. My kids were dying. I put like oh my gosh. chocolate mm. chips in them. Ooh. I learned how to fry an egg properly. Don't laugh. It's an egg. Um, it's, 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 no, no. it's, it's, it's all egg it's, easy. Not it's not easy. Okay. How about okay. vegetables? Let's, let's okay. So this is roasting vegetables. I think, oh yeah, we have this like easy peasy I will say little thing. Calvin uses the same knife, so this is great. <laughs> wow. Now she can use the <laughs> big put, knife. You put the baby knife in here. <laughs> I can handle it. Okay, this is easy. Well, this is just slicing. I mean, anybody can use a zucchini. But anyway. You're going really fast in this. I know. Wait, actually, Elizabeth told me. Very, very. Good. I don't know. What, Why are you asking? Does it me matter that? what thickness the slice? <laughs> well, are? exactly. Yes, you do. Remember our roasting chart. We want to make sure that they are all uniform pieces Look so that at they're going to cook Wait, at the same here. time, oh right? This is incredible. These grains are all the same. And so that's thickness. You're going to get all of these methods and techniques that you'll be able to use in your own cooking. Mm -hmm. This chart is. Um, Unbelievable. So right. it has all yeah, show the chart. This chart, so I framed of, this. I yes. framed it and put so it in my different house. vegetables, how long you cook them, uh -huh. whole mm. salt, pepper, mm -hmm. toss, don't crowd them on the pan. Okay. It just kind of has, it's like your little cheat sheet. I love but it tells that. you what each vegetable, how long you roast it. It's okay, very simple. nice. So okay. Now let's, okay, so let's say you did That's that presto. Incredible. Okay, now listen, be generous with your oil. That's what Elizabeth High School would say. Don't be cheap it's about it. It's a four-syllable okay? word. And then, oh, oh, oh. And then be with generous salt. with your salt. Like, I always was really not. And Perfect. then also, I am weird. I never want to touch anything. But mm -hmm. they let me wear gloves. Like, I, cause I'm like, my no, hands I'm are the probably dirty. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, here, I'll use this. Use that. Anyway, you put them on there, and then you Make roast sure for what's yeah. the temperature? Yeah, how cold. long? So these are going to go Look in 150 on degrees. Uh -huh. 450. Uh huh. So okay. we want, because we want it to caramelize, we right. want that beautiful But look, color. when you set it on the tray and just use a non okay. right. like this and uh -huh. separate it, make sure they have yeah. room. Okay, well, don't crowd them. Did y'all just skirt. hear what she said? She don't said crowd don't crowd the vegetables. Look at you. Listen, I made roasted broccoli. It was delicious. Okay, for okay. okay. so okay. Now, here this we are is the here. skirt steak. It's because it's almost as big as your skirt. You can go all around, <laughs> so you got to cut it. Where's my knife? Oh, here, watch out. So you cut, right? Yes. Yes, Okay, so you just trim it like this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh
So, so there. Just because we want to make sure it's going to be able to fit yeah. in the pan. Okay. Right. Now, okay. if you're doing this at home and you have a grill, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. um, we don't. So let's go ahead and make our marinade. We're make and a marinade. What's the marinade? We're going to add our. Okay, this um, is like some. Bear chipotle peppers. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now. If brown you're, sugar. Uh, brown sugar. So the brown sugar doesn't burn on the, the pan? Okay. No, no we're because marinating. we're going to pat it. You only have a minute left, so I'm going to try it. Is that soy sauce? Uh huh. Ooh. And what? Maple syrup? Balsamic. No, balsamic, like I said. And because yeah. it's, okay. it's so thin, it cooks pretty quickly, right? It does. How long? Absolutely. So just a little bit on each side, probably about three minutes per side is all you're going to need to do. Okay, but wait, am I marinating? I thought we marinated this. So overnight. Put your put your meat in the mm -hmm. marinade mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and anything four hours, eight hours, right. um, in the you fridge. know exactly. Mm -hmm. But then when you take it out, you want to pat it dry. Uh -huh. God, look at this! this. I mean, she's pat it dry. Amazing. Yes, okay. I love this. It then you good. coat your pan. I uh -huh. like to use a cast iron. Right. Yes, you coat it with like canola oil or whatever. Uh -huh. Right. And then, right? And then Ooh, once you cook it, sizzle. you got to let it rest, right? You do. Because you let it rest for about ten minutes now. Very oh, nice. I'm sorry. Did you have any more? And what about, what, what about, can you cook it against the grain? Cut it against the grain? Oh, well, well I mean, it? if you don't know what you're doing, yeah. with the grain. How do you cut But that? since I do, yes. you cut against the grain. This like that, yes. right? Look at that. Yes, she's so Very happy. Nice. She's, everyone's holding their breath in the Today <laughs> I mean, Cooking Department. It's like me. Yeah, because it's like, did <laughs> she really learn really anything? Good coach. But I've learned a lot. She's delicious. Terrific. And Naomi, honestly, I'm just a little more confident to try. I mean, you inspire their life lessons. Yes. There you go. I mean, I could cook. Oh, I swear, I'm so proud of oh. you. We're on a Savannah, journey. Elizabeth, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having us. <laughs>contributor Elizabeth High School is going to show all of us how to use those fresh summer veggies in two great recipes. Let us tell you about her book, shall we? Her new book is called Come On Over, Southern Delicious for Every Day and Every Occasion. So good to have you back. I, it's so you missed you good so to be back. I mean, yes. I'm, I'm serious. I'm the happiest person in New York <laughs> City right now. I don't, I mean, I've just been thrilled to be here. I've well, been we waiting. Want, we want to know how to make this. So yes. this is my favorite thing. I love eggplant. But I think people, number one, a lot of people just say, I don't like eggplant. Yeah. Well, they've never had it's it cooked properly. Right. Or they just don't know how to cook it. That's me. This is the key. You have to salt it before you start, okay? Otherwise, so it's just a watery So what mess, happens right? is, yes, it has a lot of moisture. It also can be a little bit bitter. If you salt it, though, it's going to draw the so moisture out and the bitterness. Do? You put it in there. So we're going to chop it up. Right. We're going to salt it. Okay. And then you're going to let it sit for about okay. 20 minutes. And you don't have to now, peel it. The, no, you okay. don't have to peel it for this recipe. Okay. Then you're going to pull it out of that, and okay. you do have to drain it. Otherwise, okay. this is going to be less too Soup. salty. Okay. You won't be able to use it. Okay. Okay. So we have our tomatoes. These are fresh, beautiful tomatoes beautiful. with their juice. We're going to do a little bit of olive oil, a little okay. bit of salt.
and then that's going to go in the oven. Oh. Now, the reason we're doing that is because we want to deepen oh, it. That's we want that. it to caramel. Yes. Ooh. We want it to caramelize, um, it, and that's that's what's going to happen by roasting okay. it. Okay. If you by chance don't have time to cut up tomatoes, can you use canned like absolutely and okay. out of season? Okay. So, so if, you're for a in the, <laughs> if you're in the if you're in the if it's winter, absolutely. Okay. All right. Now watch Look at this. all that garlic. Yes. So we're going to go Ooh. garlic whole cloves. See, you yep. don't even have to chop that easy, up. Easy. And then everything's just going to go in. Oh, that's yeah. Okay. That was a little bit of olive oil already in there. Yeah. And then we're going to give it a stir. Oh. Now, Don't this is veggies. something, you know, I mean, for a Monday night, there's yeah. no reason in the world that we can't make it special. Okay. Did you see how long that took me? Oh, and yeah. I know you Stop say it. that you're not a good chopper, but you can use big oh pieces. It could be big, huge pieces, as long as they're all the same size. We just want it and to cook And you just serve more. it and eat it just like that. A little bit of basil on top. Wait, this is this? Yes. This is phenomenal. Thank I you. know it is. I was thinking it was going to be harder. So easy. What, so, what's in so here? So then vinegar? we add a little bit of vinegar at the end, mm. and that just kind of gives it another level of flavor. Oh, my gosh. Now, yeah, this can be served room temperature, cold. It's perfect for mm -hmm. summer entertaining because it's delicious. it out for a while. Put it in there. Done. Okay. Now. We're going to have some leftovers. I always double that recipe. Hence Make Ahead Monday. Yes. And so oh, this now is this is the thing. This is going to knock your socks off. Okay, do it. It is a vegetable lasagna. We're going to use our ratatouille. Okay. We do make a bechamel, which okay. is just a cream sauce. Okay. 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 So we have a little bit of flour. We're mm. adding this to our butter, which is already in here. Now, you have got to whisk this, uh -huh. or it is going to lump all up on you, and you do not want a lumpy we don't cream want lumpy. sauce. Okay. But see how nice that is, oh, Dylan? Yeah. That's so yeah. creamy. We also have a bay leaf in here. I was just to say you put a bay leaf in there. Okay. Now, this is my favorite. Nutmeg. So, if you're going to use nutmeg, you please, please. <laughs> Get the um, get the whole cloves okay. and use your grater. Yes, all right. We and you don't need much. Because right? if, no, you don't need much because the other once it's grated, it really loses a lot of its flavor. Okay. And if you don't have one of these, you need a grater. I Everybody just needs a grater. Got one. I'm telling you, <laughs> they, are, they are the best. They are the best. Now that this is not what you use on your feet though, if right. you have calluses. <laughs> all right. This is stays in the kitchen. Might be a bit much. Don't be taking this in the bathroom. Okay, good. And this is why we so, missed you. Now, yeah. <laughs> we're going to add a little bit of salt to this, okay. and now we're going to so add our milk. Cream or milk. This is just milk. Okay. And then it's going to thicken up because we have that flour and butter mixture. Mm. Let that get a little bit thick. Okay. Now, get here's the fun part. Okay. Now, I've gotten a little spoiled with these. Um, these are the no-bake lasagna noodles. My language. Yes. Yes. So you they don't bake but they're yummy. All. No, you don't. You're going to bake them in it's here, season. and they work okay. beautifully. Um, you know, you don't have to use them. You could certainly use regular, obviously. Okay. Now, here's our fabulous ratatouille. Yum, nice. yum. Don't y'all love it when I speak fancy French? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I practiced that in the mirror all it morning. I was like, ratatouille. Ratatouille. Is, listen. Um, anyway, I so try it. It, 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 it works. So oh my gosh. We have our ratatouille, and then we're gonna do a layer of cheese. Oh, okay. stop it. Then we Wait, do our layer of those. bechamel. The listen. baby's kicking a lot right now. He, and it's a he is starving. Well, I don't this. have baby in there. I'm so starving. starving. And then um, the beautiful bechamel. So you just the Did way you, you get would a do, bite? Are you kidding me? Get in there. This is a good time. Yeah. So the way you would do sauce, so to speak, you do it with the chef. Exactly. Now, my husband Luke. He doesn't think he's eating unless he has meat. Do you understand? Like That's he's true. like, well, they're kind of we didn't eat yeah. supper. What about Italian sausage? Mm, Cooked Italian sausage, or you could even do ground beef, lamb and sausage. Oh my like gosh, with lamb the sausage. Or? Yeah. So then I'm gonna cook that on the side. I'm gonna sprinkle okay, it on top of there. my vegetables, and then we're gonna go and finish it. But can I tell you something? What angel? This might be the best veggie lasagna I've ever had. This is delicious. This is. That's Ridiculous. And the oh, fresh so sauce happy. just oh, like makes ties it all oh together. It does. It's just so it creamy so much better and delicious. Here's the thing. I Everybody think. at home knows I tell the truth, right? Yes. Especially about yes. food. This is worth going to today.com mm. slash food and getting this recipe. Home run wow. for you. Thank you, honey. So, so Thank good. Thank you, honey. Delicious. I appreciate it. You know it's so good when we like pack tomatoes. it up for lunch a little but later. The roasting the tomatoes. tomatoes really do help, doesn't it? Wow. So um, good. Yes, all right. Make sure you get that book. Come on over. Come on over. Uh, so good to see you in person. Let's say it one more time. Come on over. Yes, come on over. You know, you I got to kids in college. We got to sell some books.
with the temperatures heating up and people starting to throw larger gatherings, it's time to get you ready to host some friends and family for a hearty meal. And who better? Who better than our friend and hostess with the mostest, Elizabeth Haskell? She's going to help us out. She's got a new cookbook out. It's called Come On Over, and she's got a Fix Ahead Friday recipe that's perfect for weekend brunch. First of all, we love you. Yes. And, oh, and, my Lord. And, Elizabeth, and, I have that dress, but I couldn't zip it. <laughs> I couldn't well, zip it up. Uh, okay, that's, that's kind of funny because... It's barely zipped. It took two people to get me in this damn thing. But, um, yeah, so I, I'm only going to keep it on for just a few minutes, trying to breathe here okay. and get oh, through this listen, segment. I, first, You're the best hostess. Yeah, and I like that you can make something ahead yes. because often you feel like you got to make it. Here they come. They're coming in the door. I'm going to tell you something right now. I, I don't know where Lionel Richie's kids were, <laughs> but that song, Easy Like a Sunday Morning, is ridiculous. <laughs> because it's not. I mean, you're trying to get kids dressed. You've got Sunday school or you've got a soccer game. you got something. You're looking for cleats. You're running around. This we can make today, and you can serve it on Sunday, Saturday morning. And, and there's one last thing that you've got to do. All right, we have eggs, mm -hmm. and we're going to mix these up really well, and then we're adding our milk. This is actually half and half. You could use milk, but wow. I just, you know, why not? It's, it's <laughs> just Sunday jump morning. It in. And yeah. It's not for the lactose insensitive, but that's okay. Exactly. We've got a little salt. We also have our sugar, <laughs> a little bit of vanilla. And I'm going to tell you something. Vanilla is expensive. But do not buy the imitation vanilla. Oops. It's just a sad imitation, <laughs> all right? I buy Spend that. the money. Don't get it. I know it. it's hard. Why? Because it I tastes? Felt the Why? Same way. Why? Because it just makes that much difference. The flavor oh. is incredible in real no, vanilla. I'm going to tell yes, Henry to start ten... cutting the coupons for something else, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's 10 times the price, but you need it. All right, here we go. go We've got our it. blueberries. What I did, I tossed a little bit of flour Oh. In with my blueberries so that this doesn't turn purple. That's going to coat our oh, blueberries. It's going to cut. I'm telling you, so it's going to protect them. We're going to put those right on in. And now we have our French bread chunk. Yeah. Okay. It's got to be French bread. Is that like a baguette or something? Well, I mean, you could use a baguette. Any day old bread, really, day is going to be yeah. great. You know, if you've got um, French bread or an Italian loaf. Now I'm adding Wonder my bread. cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And then we have some cream cheese. Oh. And you want to make sure that it's room temperature. I did cut it up into small pieces <laughs> just so that it will kind of blend. All right, what are y'all laughing at? Well, we just, just you. love you. Know, are y'all laughing at me? No, no we're, we're laughing not. because we... of the amount of cream cheese you just poured like, in that bowl. You're just like... <laughs> we know that you're southern by <laughs> that bowl it's right Sunday. there. It's Sunday. It's Sunday morning, y'all. <laughs> okay, it's going to be doing? a treat. Okay, now here we go. We take our, our greased um, pan, 9 by 13 casserole dish. If you don't have one, you need to get one, <laughs> um, especially if you're going to get my book, come on over, because literally every other recipe calls for a 9 by 13. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to um, take yeah. this butter. Yeah. And did you notice my cute butter uh, we cow? Love yeah, this cow. is something else that everybody needs is a butter cow. Do we really that need a butter can... cow? We need one, yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Because then you can keep this room temperature butter is always at your disposal. It's fantastic. I'm telling you. All right, okay, so here what? we go. This is going to go right into our oven. Yeah. Now, if if you're actually making this recipe, though, I mean, obviously we're doing this for TV today, but you're going to leave it in the refrigerator at least overnight. Okay. So that's the great news. We're going to make it ahead, and then look at this, y'all. Oh, let's show see, let's us, see. Elizabeth. Oh, have you ever? Oh my Ooh, gosh! Beautiful. How do stop the, it. And, and how do you I serve mean, it? Now. How do you serve it up? Do a nice big spoonful, and then it's going to go onto our plate. You could do oh, a little yum. bit of powdered Beautiful sugar on top. Sugar, yeah. uh, okay. and, um, we got to so rock got and roll, and we love you. We love you, too. Get Elizabeth's <laughs> new book. Come on over. She says you can entertain anywhere at today.com slash shop. Good Friday morning. There are new positive signs in the debt ceiling talks. And a major surprise.